Daddy. Put the car away, will you, Jim? Yes, sir. Max. People didn't use their eyes, they wouldn't be people. Just a world full of moles. I still don't like waiting. You're early tonight. Daylight savings. I didn't know you ran your business on a schedule. Well, I conformed. Everything's routine these days, Daddy. It's the way of the world. Progress. Yeah. Where's Tony tonight? I let him have a night off. Don't you feel undressed? Only when my eyes are closed. How much do you make a year? It depends. How much do you lose? Nine, I have the point, I lift the up, coming out. Nine, the winner, that's the winner, man. Hands up, say everybody. How's business? Agreeable. Never been in before. She's unhappy. She say so? No. Hello. Hello. I'm not lonesome. Well, good for you. We're closing up. You work here? It's my place. I'm uh, sorry, but it's two o'clock. Okay. Could I have just one more, though? This one sort of lost its nerve. Marty. Same. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, wait a minute. Won't you have a drink with me? Oh, thanks. Is my lipstick smeared? Marty tells me you're unhappy. Marty? Bartender. Marty, do I look unhappy? Sure. But who doesn't? He's an observer. He spots people. Kind of like an air raid warden turned evangelist. Knows his business. Not a lot of practice. He once told me there's nothing like looking at the world through an old gin bottle. Sounds like it would be distorted. I guess you have to be an expert, like Marty. But, uh, what's your problem? My husband. He's going to kill me. What do you say to a girl whose husband's going to kill her? Nothing. I don't know why I told you. Because I asked. That's right, you did, didn't you? Well, Mr. Daddy. Mr. Dandy, I think I'll take a walk. Marty, may I have my check, please? It's on the house. Thank you. Oh, uh, about that walk. You worried about me, Mr. Dandy? I guess so.
What makes you think your husband's going to kill you? Well, he hasn't been exactly honest in his business dealings. It's a very dull story, Mr. Dandy. I'd like to hear it. All right. He's been stealing money from his business associate. I found out about it, and he thinks I'm going to tell. You can read it in any dime detective novel. What's your husband's name? His name's Castry. Steve Castry. What's the matter? Do you know him? Yeah, I've heard about him. He's, uh, he's in the... Uh... Rackens. That's a dull story, too. Young, small-town girl comes to the big city. You probably wouldn't believe it. He's in business with Max Bruno. Very bad boy. Why don't you tell the police? Tell them my husband's been stealing from Max, that he's going to kill me. Well, that's a pretty good story. Sure. The police would have a nice long talk with Steve and Max. Steve would say I was crazy and Max would check. Somebody would wind up dead. That's what you're worried about anyway, isn't it? It's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Keep them advertising. Thanks for walking with me. Where are you going? I don't know. Home, maybe. Maybe Las Vegas to see a lawyer. Whatever it is, you'll read about it. Anything I can do? I'd like to call you sometime. Sure. But uh, make it after Las Vegas. Hmm? Of course. Thank you. Night. Night. Wait a minute. I made a mistake. It isn't good night. It's good morning, isn't it? Nice walk? Uh, she was unhappy, all right. She looked it. We all do sooner or later. Very attractive. She thinks her husband's going to kill her. They all do sooner or later. Number 16. Good. Seven, that's the loser, man. Come on, for you, boy. Little boy, hands up, money down. Here he goes, man. Put your money down. Place your bet. How'd he go, Max? Fair. You took me for about 30,000. Fair enough. Like you said, Dandy, progress. See you Tuesday. Max, uh, how's your partner? Steve? He's all right. Why? Just wondering why you never brought him by. You take enough off of me. What do you want, the whole business? I don't like him. That girl at the table, the one I took a walk with? Yeah? Married to his partner. Go home and get some sleep. You look tired. You're a liar. Well, then just go home. If her husband's gonna knock her off, no sense you getting in the middle. You'd just be uncomfortable. You know something, Monty? You got a point. Good night. Late, Mr. Dandy. Oh, just about a half an hour. The radio is still on. I like music. What time did you get in? A little before three. Do you always go to sleep with your radio on? Look, I smoked a cigarette, had a glass of milk, stretched out on the couch, and fell asleep. You don't seem to be worried. Should I be? We're from homicide, Mr. Dandy. You said that. It's almost four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. This happens to you every day? Well, not every day, no. Probably make me a little nervous, would it? Do you know a Mrs. Beth Caspery? 
Yeah, I met her tonight. In your club? That's right. Is this from your club, Mr. Danny? Gladstone 3962. Mm -hmm. That's Mike's change. Did you write it on that cover? I did. And Mrs. Casper took them with her. Is she dead? That's an interesting question. Well, average. You're from homicide. Mrs. Casper is the last person I saw with those matches. She told me she was going to be killed. You better get dressed. Where are we going? To the morgue. On the way down, you can tell us all about your evening with Mrs. Caspery. She's dead, then. Very. It's not very nice, but take another look. Well, it's the same hair, same dress. She's wearing a mink stole. We've got it upstairs. Did she tell you who was going to kill her? You better talk to her husband. He's upstairs, too. Sorry, routine. Don't you guys have trouble sleeping? Here. You need a smoke. This is Mr. Danny. Who are you? This is Steve Casper, Mr. Danny. What's he got to do with it? You saw your wife earlier this evening. You know who killed her? No. We thought you might tell us, Steve. I wasn't home. I don't know who did it. Your wife told Mr. Danny you were planning on it. He tell you that? That's right. Your name's Danny? That's right. You're a liar, Mr. Danny. You're lucky you ran a police station on the street I'd kick your teeth in. Yeah. Well, you're still a liar. My wife wouldn't say I was going to kill her. Send Max Bruno in. How long have you known my wife, Mr. Danny? I just met her tonight for the first time. And she told you I was going to kill her. How are you, Lieutenant? Sit down, Max. You look sleepy, Tony. You get arrested for speeding, Steve? Somebody killed Beth. Killed Beth? Yeah. Do anything about it, Max? Well, I haven't seen Steve's wife for a week. This guy says he saw her tonight. She told him I was going to kill her. Who is he? His name's Danny. He's a liar. That kind of remark bothers me, Casper. You're a rough boy, huh, Mr. Danny? You think I'm a liar, Max? I don't know you. And I don't know why you want me down here for. I don't know nothing about Steve's wife getting killed. Steve's your partner. I don't know nothing about what he does in his spare time. If he kills his wife, it's his business. If you prove it, I guess I'll have to look for a new partner. Where were you tonight? Yeah. Where were you, Max? At home. With Tony? Yeah. All right, Tony? That's right. Did you know your partner's been stealing money from you? That's a lie. That's a dirty, rotten lie. Did you know, Max? No. You been stealing for me, Steve? No, Max, no. Can you check that, Max? I'll let you know. I understand Mr. Danny runs a very interesting club. And what club is that? It's called Daddy's Inferno. Oh, yeah, I go there sometimes. Pretty good food. I'm surprised you don't know Mr. Danny. I'm not. I never met him personally. 
Don't you get to know your customers, Mr. Daddy? Oh, I can't get to know them all personally, can I, Lieutenant? All right, Max, you and Tony can go. I'll be talking to you later. Not you. I'm holding you for murder, Caspery. What about me? Yeah, you can go. Don't worry, Casper. It isn't every day you kill your wife. Downstairs. Where to? Beach? I've seen the ocean. From the bottom? Move. I'm on a tight sketch. Come on, Tony. You're gonna kill me. At least you can tell me about it. What's the difference? That's what I mean. Move. <laughs> now, you see, it makes a lot of difference. Now, tell me about it. You're on a tighter schedule than you think. Now tell me. That, that dame in your place last night. Beth Caspery? No, Max planted her there. She wasn't Beth Caspery? No, she was only supposed to make you think she was. <coughs> Why? So that when the real Mrs. Caspery was killed, you'd think it was the dame in your place and tell the cops. You killed the real Mrs. Caspery and fixed it so I couldn't recognize her. Yeah. I didn't like the job. Well, why kill me? Well, because sooner or later you got to find out that the dame in your place wasn't the real Mrs. Caspery and put Max on the spot. Why me? Why pick me for a patsy? Well, Max doesn't like you. Not only that, you're into him for 72 grand. 73. Go on. Well, this way, you do him a favor before he kills you. You tell the cops and they believe you. They arrest Steve and Max gets rid of a partner. Who was the girl in my place tonight? Just a dame. Who was she? Shaw, Nancy Shaw. Well, where can I find her? Carlton Arms over on 58th Street. Let's go see her. Max will kill me. Well, take your choice. It's me or Max. sleeping off a skull fracture. I'll be right over. Wait for me. I can't. I got a date. Oh, wait a minute, Daddy. Stay put till I get there. Do you hear me? Don't leave till I get there. Who is it? Special delivery. Shove it under the door. You'll have to sign for it. I could sing it to you if you like, courtesy of the house. Max! You caused a lot of killing today. Where's Tony? He had a little accident. 
The police probably have him by now. I didn't want to tell them about you until I was sure. I could use an hour's head start. I wouldn't give it to you if it was your birthday. Got another cigarette? Keep him. Danny. Mr. Danny now, Tom. How's it going, Money? Usual. You think you can make a profit with that back room closed? We serve pretty good food. Well, you know how it is, Danny. Gambling's so illegal in this state. The DA is... Plays poker in his den. Sorry. The girl told us the whole story. We'll be an inquest, but I don't think you'll be held. Well, I'll see you soon. Buy a drink? No, thanks. <laughs> He's been watching every scotch and soda I mixed. I thought he was going to faint. Professional dignity. He'll make up for it when he's off duty. The last one closed up your back room and cost you a hundred G's a year. She with anybody? Not yet. Monty says you look lonesome. Monty? Bartender. My name's Dante. Oh, this is your place. Can I buy you a drink? Sure. Why not? What's your problem? Oh, it's a long story. You just get bored. Try me. It's my husband. You see, when I came home tonight, what's the matter? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing, dear. Uh, checks on me, have anything you like. But... Go ahead and have dinner. It's on the house. Love you dearly. Wrong. I just got out of that in time. This place could have been a garage by morning. <laughs> members of the Singer organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through the Singer sewing centers identified by the famous Red S trademark on the window. Tonight on Four Star Playhouse, Singer presents Dick Powell in The Squeeze. Uh, 
whiskey straight. Yes, sir. Is Willie Dante around? No, oh, not yet. I'll be here any minute, though. time with Vic Steele. Uh, he dropped a couple grand at your table. What table? Look, I'm a friend of Vic's. I came in with your him. Your name is Stanley Warren. You've been in my place a half a dozen times. Yeah. For dinner. Well, certainly I've been in for dinner. But one time I came in with Vic. No, you didn't. I'm telling you, I came in with Vic Steele. I shot dice at your table. I dropped a couple of grand. Well, you got the wrong place, Mr. Warren. I'm telling you, I came in if with... If you shot dice with Vic Steele, you did it someplace else. You see anything that looks like a table around here? He's got a back room. Maybe you like short dinner. Maybe you don't know who I am. Your father's the district attorney. That's right. He considers gambling illegal in this city. Very. He'd close you up in two minutes if he knew about your back room. Look, Mr. Warren, I told Look, you Look, Mr. Dante, I know you've got a back room. I know that certain select people gamble there. Okay, so I didn't come in with Vic Steele. I just used his name. I promise not to mention it to Vic. Well, I don't care who you mention it to. I come into your place tonight to shoot dice. Well, maybe you can drum up a game in the kitchen. A couple of cooks are real sports. Look, are you going to keep this up, or do I go home and tell Papa a bedtime story? <laughs> you know something? I don't like you. Give me a little time. I grow on people. So do warts. Dante, you're going to take me to your back room. You're going to extend me all the courtesies you would to one of your favorite customers. You're going to let me shoot dice on your nice little green table. Or, so help me, I'll raise such a racket, you'll be entertaining cops from six neighboring counties. I cross my heart. All right, Mr. Warren. But I think we should understand each other right from the beginning. Sure. If I get in trouble with the district attorney's office because I let you in, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to cry my eyes out. And I'm going to break your nose. Cross my heart. Looking for a nine. Well, this is it. Well, I'll have to cash a check. Come on. Nine. Hi, Dutch. Hello, Willie. Tonight you lose. Well, I'll grin and bear it. Barney, this is Mr. Stanley Warren. Cash his check for him, will you? Any limit? How's your bank account? Oh, I'll start with 500. Make it out to cash. Be nice to him, Barney. He comes from a very distinguished family. I hope you lose your fillings. Five hundred. Six right back. Thank you. Want to cash those in, Dutch? Huh? Want to cash those in? Um, no, I think I'll play a little more. Coming out for a new point. Place your bet. Seven to win it, play the line. Coming out again. Here he comes. Nine is the new point. What are you doing? I lose money at my own tables. Yeah, but you're going to make me come out short. I'll make it up to you. Hey, uh, what happens if young Mr. Warren loses a whole lot of money? I don't want to think about it. He's a bad little boy. He throws his father's weight around too much. His father's a big man. Got a lot of weight to throw around. And if he drops a bundle, he goes running home to Daddy, and he tattles on that mean old Mr. Daddy who runs that nasty gambling place. Oh, I don't think so, no. Why don't you keep this place cleaner? No towels. Well, kid may squawk a little bit, but not to his father. District attorney takes a short-sighted view of people who gamble in this city. Well, then why let him in at all? Father or no father, he's the kind that makes trouble. Insurance. You'll make less in than out. Wow. Well. Pardon me. Could you tell me where I may find the owner? Uh, I'm Willie Dandy. You're the owner? Oh, uh, uh, coffee's just for a heck. Where's my brother? Your brother? That's right. I heard him tell the cab driver to bring him here. Now, where is he? 
Well, now, if you'll just tell me who you... Stanley are. Warren. I know he's here. I know he's gambling. Now, where is he, Mr. Dante? Well, Miss... I... Mr. Dante, my father is the district attorney. And if my brother is gambling in this place, and if he loses one red cent, I'm going to get you into an awful lot of trouble. Oh, uh, look, honey, just stay right there, will you? Just wait for me. Just wait right there, please. I'll just be a minute. Don't move. I'll be just a second. Now, would you mind coming over to my booth and telling me quietly what this is all about? No, no, I want to see Stanley. Shh, please, no, don't talk so loud. Now, would you take me to him immediately? Why, there are people here, just... Oh, where is sit he? Sit down, sit down, sit down. Look, uh, Miss Warren, I don't want any trouble. Well, then take me to my brother. I can't do that. Oh, well, I'm now, not going to see Please, that. please. Just let me tell you my side of it, that you can do anything you want. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know how I get mixed up in these things. I didn't ask your brother here. He just came in, threatening to make trouble, just like you are. And you let him gamble. Miss Warren, up until tonight, no member of your family could prove I operated anything other than a legitimate business. Now, I'm no giant brain or anything, but I am smart enough to know that I shouldn't hide the fact from you that I do have a dice table on the premises. And my brother is playing on that table right now. Excuse me. What do you want? Will you okay this check for Mr. Uh, Wolf? Yes, Miss Warren, your brother. I give my regards to Mr. Wolf. Okay. Your brother is playing on the table, but believe me, I'd prefer he played in a sand pile. Mr. Tanty, I can't help that. You know gambling's illegal in this city. Well, I think I'm more of an authority on that than you are. Well, then you'd better go and get my brother right now. No, oh, well, just sit down, please. Mr. Tanty, I don't think you're in any position to order me around. Well, I think I am. You want to cause trouble, your brother wants to cause trouble, I can lose my whole business. So this is the way it's going to be. Oh. And you just stay right there until I'm finished. Now, if you want to go to your father and tell him I'm operating an illegal gambling place, go right ahead. You know what he'll do? He'll raid me. If he raids me while your brother's here, it's going to be very embarrassing. If he waits until your brother leaves, he won't find anything around here that even resembles the dice table. And I'll just be an indignant uh, restaurant tour. If for any reason whatsoever he closes me down, I'll just be forced to produce the check I cast for your brother. Certain newspapers would love the story. District attorney's son gambles while father crusades. I'm sorry, but you just forced me to do it. Mr. Dante, now, now wait, now you sit down for one minute. I have something I think you should know. I, I really didn't particularly want to cause you any trouble. You see, I just had to get Stanley out of here as quickly as possible. Because in the last month, my brother has lost nearly $6,000 gambling. Mm, it's too bad. Yes, it is, because I had to make good his debts. You had to. He has no money of his own. What? He went through his inheritance in a year. Now he's nearly gone through mine, and I can't pay his debts any longer. Oh, fine. I just don't get a check for him for five hundred dollars. Well, if you make him stop, I promise I'll make it up to you. I couldn't well, do it right away, but... Well, hasn't your brother got a job? No, I mean, he's had three jobs since he left school, but he lost them. And Daddy was very upset, but... Well, he's busy, you know, and he's always spoiled Stanley. He wanted him to be a lawyer. Please, I'm, I'm getting along. I know it sounds rather dramatic. Well, it certainly does fit in a little bit with fights and flowers, but... I'll tell you what you do, dear. You run along home, and I'll send Stanley along as soon as I can. Will you really? Well, what if I'm strong enough? Oh, thank you. And please, don't mention it. No, no, I won't. To anyone. Seven to winner, play the line. Coming out again, here he comes. You sure to earn a good one. Nine's the point, make nine. How much have you cash for Warren? Twenty-five hundred. Point is nine. Nina, nine. What are you doing with all your money, Dante? Uh, it depends. What do you do with your sisters? What are you talking about? Nine. You know what happens to bad little boys who don't pay their debts. Listen, if you've been talking to my sister, you can... Uh, I'm in trouble, sonny. Your father can't help you out of this. There's nothing wrong with those checks. Well, I hope so, for your sake. But you're through until I check with the bank. Listen, I dropped 2500 at your table. Well, if you say so, but uh, that's your limit. Mr. Danny, I'm warning you. you no, just... you're not warning anybody. 
You're walking on eggs, Stanley. Don't go yell to your father if you want to, but just remember I'm holding these checks. You can't blackmail me. You've got a lot of nerve talking about blackmail. Now go on, Peter, get out of here. Before I had you hauled up for cashing bum checks. Well, I'm in the clear. Those checks are for gambling. You know gambling in this city. You're a little confused. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just an indignant uh, restaurateur who cashed these checks because I thought you were good for them. Nice cab fare. Go on, Peter. Distinguished family, huh? Yeah, the stretch. I'll hold these by me. Trouble? Well, nothing I can't handle. I'm at Willie Dandy's, and I think I got something for you. Stan Warren just dropped a bundle at the table. The VA son? Yeah, and he gave Willie a bunch of bad checks. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, all of them checks is made out to cash. Is that right? Well, well, well. I thought maybe you'd like to get your hands on them checks, and maybe the DA might want to do you a favor. Hey, I would have looked in the papers if they thought the kid was doing business with Boris Darius. Yeah. And passing me bum checks at that. Dutch, you got a reward coming. Drop around to the office tomorrow. Right. Well, thank you very much, boss. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again. Ernie! Ernie! Your boss. Follow that and get the car out. I think we're going to pay Mr. Willie Dante a little visit. Okay, boss. Oh, hello, Mr. Warren. Yes, this is Willie Dante. That's right. Uh-huh. Now, oh, look, dear, if you care to come down here, I can give you those checks of your brothers. Uh-huh. That's right. Oh, that's all right, all right. I'm glad to do it. Fine. All right. Bye-bye. What can I do for you, Darius? Ask me to sit down. Sit down. You can sit down, too. I got a business proposition for you. Huh? You got something I want. I'll pay good money for it. I understand, young Warren, was in here earlier, and he passed you some bum checks. I think it's about $2,500 worth of bad checks. Will you cash Mr. Torres's check? Excuse me, gentlemen. You don't want to get stuck. I'll take them off your hands. You might take those checks and make a deal with the district attorney. I understand he's got enough evidence against you to put you away for a hundred years. All right, Dante. How much would you say the checks are worth? Fort Knox couldn't make a down payment. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand how much I understand. You get those checks, you'll blackmail the district attorney. Young Warren will scream all over town that he cashed them at my place, and I'll be your roommate at Sing Sing. I'll give you ten grand. Oh, you're wasting your time. I'm awfully sorry. Sit down. Now, wait a minute. You... I Please. got a gun under the table. As long as you don't feel like selling, supposing you just give me the checks. Darius, you've got a grand jury investigation hanging over. You can't afford to get mixed up in anything like this. I can't afford not to. Now give me the checks, or so help me, I'll have Ernie blow your insides out. I mean it. You heard what he said. You're too independent, Dante. One of these days, you're gonna get dead for it. Hello. Hello. 
Where's Mr. Dandy? In his office. He's expecting you. Right through those curtains. Thank you. Come in. Dandy. Oh, hello, hello. Would you like a cup of coffee or something? No, thank you, but I can't oh, tell you how grateful I'm sorry I had to call you so late at night. I, it's quite all right. I wake up the whole house. Uh, oh, no, you didn't wake up anyone. Oh, really? I, uh, uh, do you mind if I have a cup of coffee? Of course not. Mm. Listen, I'm never going to forget It was such this. a long drive, though. I... No, it was nothing. Two minutes. <clears throat> I haven't got the checks. Why? Well, it's very simple. I, I was robbed. Robbed? Boss Darius, the man your father's prosecuting, brought a big gun with him. Darius? Mm-hmm. You gave him the checks? Well, I sort of had to. I, I hate bleeding to death. Oh, no. Do you realize what Darius will do with those checks? Yes, yes. He'll probably try to blackmail your father. Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like this is just terrible. Yeah, yeah. And you just gave them to him. You just let him have them. Well, it, uh... Honey, I had a gun pointing right at my dinner. You mean, you mean he walked in here in front of everybody, pointed a gun at you and demanded the checks? Well, it, it was really a little more dramatic than that. Yeah, in your, in your very own restaurant? Why, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, it's absurd. Do you realize what's going to happen to Stanley? Yeah, I... Oh. My father's going to find out, going to find out all about his gambling and everything else. Oh, no, 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 please calm down now. Oh, it's just awful. What can I do? I've done everything I could to help Stanley, to keep Father from finding out what's been going on. Oh, it'll work out all right. I'm sure it will. It's just terrible. Well, well, maybe I can do something. Oh, what can you possibly do? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I can get the checks back. Oh, really? Well, no, I'm not sure. I'm not promising anything, but there must be some way to get them back. Oh, yes, I'm sure you can do it. Well, I, I don't know. I don't really know how. I, I, I know Darius uh, pretty well. Oh, incidentally, I... I I hope your old man puts him, uh, your father puts him away for keeps. Terrible fella. Is your father in town? No, he's gone fishing. Oh, where? Oregon. Oregon? Oh, that's wonderful. I fish up there a lot. It rains all the time. When's he coming back? Friday. Friday. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because Darius can't talk to him until then. Yeah, I think it'll work out. You know, I think you should go home. Do you really think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you get there, tell that lame-brained brother of yours to keep his mouth shut. Okay. And don't say a word to anybody. Okay. Because I got an idea. Hmm? Well, won't you tell me what you're going to do? Can you keep a cigarette? Mm hmm I'm going to crack a safe. What? So if you find my body floating in the river, tell your father to add one more count in this case against Boss Darius. Are you kidding? Don't you think Mr. Darius will put those checks in his safe? Oh, yes, I well, guess he'd so. only get mad if I ask him for them. You really are serious. And then you keep your pretty little mouth shut. Well, I can't let you do this. I'm saving my own hide, too. Yes, but it's too dangerous. Terribly. Well, I'm not going to let you do this. Beat it. Go on. Better be careful. Your uh, lipstick is smeared. Did she tell her about the checks? Mm-hmm. Did she kiss you for it? She kissed me when I told her I was going to get them back. Oh, well, I don't blame her. It's like saying you're going to return Manhattan to the Indians. You're going to help me. Oh, me? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Oh, come on, money, for old time's sake. No, absolutely. No, I'm retired. No, but for me, just as once. Mr. Danny, just this once could get me 15 years. But I gotta get those checks. No, out. never again. Oh, but you're the best safe man in the business. Was the best. All right, long and take an hour. No, absolutely not. I'm through, retired, finished, now and for always. No, 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 no. Where else? Are you sure the checks are in here? No. Oh, swell. Get to work. Listen, I could do this with handcuffs on. What am I saying? Will you hurry up? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like old times. <laughs> My 
money or genius. Never got past the fourth grade. Oh, yeah, let's get out of this fire cap. I'm with you. Well, well, well. Oh, yes, yes, good, good, uh, good evening. We, we represent the Real Safe Insurance Company. We come twice a month for inspections. I'm surprised at you, Dante. You should have more sense. Yeah, I guess we should. Give me those checks. What's going on? Uh, oh. Hey, get them over your head. You can't get away with this, Dante. Oh, I thought you'd come up with some original line like that. Watch that first step at the pit! You okay? You mellow head. Get the car out. We gotta get those checks back. Hey, can I go home now? Oh, you're safer here. Sit down. Safer here? Sure. Suppose I went to your place first. I don't like this. We can have the whole army protect us and I wouldn't feel safe. No, oh, relax, will you? Darius will want those checks before he starts shooting. Oh, swell. How do you know? Maybe he just comes in here and starts shooting everything in sight. Trust me. Trust you. <laughs> I do, I do, but, but who, who's going to vouch for Darius? Is it? Yeah. Oh. How are you? Give me those checks, Dante. You better be more careful, Darius. With an investigation hanging over you, it could be serious if someone caught you with that big gun. You better give me those checks or do I kill you right here? Mm, threatening assault. You hear me, Dante? Uh, Marty, did you lock the front door? Sure. Breaking and entering. You asked for it. Drop it, Darius. Now, look, Waldo. Lieutenant Waldo. Now, look, uh... This two guy busted into my house, cracked my safe, or stole some personal property. I ain't done nothing illegal. You got a permit for this gun? How about you, Ernie? No permit. Threatening assault, breaking and entering. Now oh, you listen to me, you're too big flat foot. Resisting arrest. You can't get away with this. Shh. Disturbing the peace and our supper. That's, That's right, supper, please. I'm a citizen. I've been robbed. The DA some pet some bomb checks. And Dante swiped them from my safe. I've got a right to bring charges against the DA's son. You know anything about some checks, Willie? Don't know what he's talking about, Pesto. Oh, wait Shut a minute. Shut up! But he's telling the truth. Shut up, both of you. Thanks, Willie. Oh, it's all right, Lieutenant. Have a drink before you leave? Mm, no, thanks. Now, I'll come back later. Monty will scramble you some eggs. I'll take a rain check. Come on. All right, let's go. Well, these eggs are pretty good. What'd you try to cook? Sing, sing. Good morning, Miss Warren. Oh, hello. Is that Darius? Yeah. What about the police? Oh, Walter's an old friend of mine. He won't say anything. I'm sure your father won't pay any attention to Darius. Well, by the way, uh, here are the checks. Thank you. Maybe you'd like to drive us home. I'd love to. Well, on second thought, maybe you just better drive me home. Well, does Marty have a car? Oh, the walk will do him good. Get his heart started again. Come on. You'll have to lock up. I know. Don't forget to wash the dishes. I won't. Say goodnight to Monty, dear. Goodnight, Monty. Good night. <laughs> presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino.
Good evening, Mr. Dancy. Hello, Mary. How are the tips? Generous. Well, they should be. circulating on the premises that Mr. Steele has so far won himself in the neighborhood of $80,000. 80000 In the last hour. And he's still winning. Happy birthday. Oh, uh, send a bottle of wine over to table 18, will you? Must be celebrating. He's out with his wife. Amazing. He ain't turned loose with the dice in over an hour. shooting craps. I have never had a good time shooting craps until tonight. And you spoil it. Cash in my winnings, Tino. Oh, Vic, please try and understand, will you? I'm leaving now, Mr. Dante. I'll not be back. No, this is ridiculous. You said it. And another thing, I'm giving instructions to all my boys never to show their face in your crummy joint again. How many of my boys are here? Me and three others, boss. Wait for me outside. When I get through spreading the word, you and your dice table are going to be the loneliest couple in town. Now, I doubt that very much. You do, huh? Y yes, I do. Don't steam me, Dante. Well, if you want to be steamed, go right ahead. You're being unreasonable about this, and you know it. I think you're forgetting who you're talking to. I know who I'm talking to. With my eyes closed, I knew who I was talking to. That a fact. You could be standing in the middle of the Yankee Stadium with the lights out at midnight. You know me. Blindfolded. Amazing. Elementary. How? You wear more cologne than a healthy harem. Dante, you just went too far. Well, I'm sorry if you let me. My mother it. gave me this cologne on my birthday. She must have filled your swimming pool with it. 
Dante, if you think I'm going to let you stand there and insult my mother... I am not insulting your mother. I mentioned specific items, cologne, and the amount you use. I'm sure your mother's a wonderful person. She is a doll. Hi. I wish I were. I saw Vic and Tino sail out of here like something was on fire. Yeah, well, I told him he smelled. And he got mad? Oh. Throw me something to help me forget, will you? Mm, how about a foreign legion? What's in it? Three parts rum, two parts red wine, a dash of bitters, the meat of two imported dates, a twist of lemon, and a cup of sand. Sand? It's optional. Scotch on the rocks. The sand is just for effect. Scotch. Deserter. Innkeeper. Yes, ma'am? I'd like another. If you please. Yes, ma'am. Aren't you in enough trouble already? Mind your own business. <laughs> I bet you're drinking mint juleps. How'd you know? Sticks out all over you. I bet you're drinking champagne. <laughs> My name's Dandy. I own the place. Excuse me. You do? Oh, my goodness. My name's Janice. I'm a howl. <laughs> I beg your pardon? That's a little joke. That's my last name. Capital H-O-W-L, Howell. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> oh, isn't it pretty? Brandy and ice cream. Oh, that's just scrumptious. No, 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 honey. I keep telling you. No? Not unless you come from a long line of dragons. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> now? Now. <laughs> you might as well make it at even six. You know something? This stuff makes me kind of buzzy. Uh, mm. <laughs> really? What? I bet you don't buzz. Oh, what do I do? You growl. Just nice little old growls. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Nice, mean little old manly growls. <laughs> hey, strong heart. Nearly three o'clock. Uh, say good night to Monty, dear. Uh, good night, Monty, dear. It's morning. The night has fled. Now, why don't you flee with it? Good old Monty. So loyal. Never <laughs> wants to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're going to have to lock up. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, well, uh, good night. Good night, Marty. Good night. You call the cops, Daddy gets a cement apron. No, oh, you southern girls have such charm. Mm. Mr. Dandy. Hmm? Do you like guns? Oh, especially why. Well, somebody's trying to give you one. Hmm? Now, look, Vic. You dirty, rotten. <coughs> oh, oh. This is liable to get messy, lady. You better leave. Yeah, go on, honey. Do what the nasty man says. Good night. Uh, you all. Come. Oh, now, wait. Shut up. You ruined my evening. You insult me. I told you I could. Keep your mouth shut. Do all that for me, Dante. On top of it all, you pay me in counterfeit money. Counterfeit? What are you talking about? Every lousy buck. Well? That's uh, counterfeit, all right. Show him the river. Let's go swimming. No, move. 
Oh, wait a minute now. Let me think a little. You want to get it here? Hold it. You got something to say? Yeah. Yeah, I have. You don't think I'm stupid enough to pass you bad money and wait around here for you to come back and kill me, do you? I want that money in your crummy joint right here tonight. You couldn't have. You're calling me a liar? Oh, no. Think of it. Will you admit it? I wouldn't do anything as stupid as that. The crack about my mother was pretty stupid. Somebody's pulling a fast one. Look, if I was going to hustle this stuff, I certainly wouldn't stick you with it. Your joint, that's where I got it. Well, Tino collected your winnings. So what? I was just mentioning a simple fact. Tino? Yeah? You didn't, did you? Oh, boy. No, of course he didn't. If he wanted a lousy hundred grand, all he'd have to do is ask me. Then there was only one other guy who could have touched this money. Yeah, who? George Fenimore. Never heard of him. Teller works behind the cage. Tino collected your winnings, George paid Tino, and nobody else touched the money. Hey, yeah, that's right. Uh, I guess it could be. You darn right it could be. George pays off in this stuff and pockets the real McCoy from the till. In that case, we're both out a hundred grand. You said it. Where does this Fenimore live? I've got his address in my office. Get it. We'll pay him a little visit. How's this, 303? Hey, 3 o'clock. Yeah? Ah, trick or treat. Well, well, well. Good evening, Lieutenant. Good evening, Waldo. Uh -uh. Anything I can do for you boys? Up kind of late, aren't you? Well, you see, uh... Well, yeah, you see, we were just going to... Just going to call on Mr. Fenimore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Of course, as long as he's got company. Well... Yeah. Oh, no, come on in. I'm sure Mr. Fenimore won't mind a few more visitors. Well, it's kind of late. Inside. After you. Hold it. Exciting, isn't it? Okay. It's Fenimore, all right. Been dead about a half hour. I want my lawyer. Sure, you can call him from headquarters. You think I'm going to swallow a yarn like that? That is the most fantastic story I have ever heard. You guys must think this is my first day on the force. Lieutenant, can I smoke now? No. Well, how about it, Dandy? I did it with my little hatchet. Dandy, I'm warning you. Lieutenant, I told you. I know what you told me. You and these other two liars were just out for a little walk. Think legal. I got a right to call my lawyer. You'll call him when I say you can. How long have you known George Fenimore? Ask my lawyer. You thought you'd drop in for a little visit, huh? Cross my heart. I'm still dying for a smoke. Shut up. How long Fenimore worked for you? About a year. What'd he do? I told you once, he's a waiter. Not in your little back room. Oh, Lieutenant. You were all together at your cafe between 2 and 3 a.m. Oh, come on, Waldo. You know darn good and well I didn't kill him. I don't know anything of the kind. But when Willie Danny and Vic Steele and Tino Phipps show up at a murdered man's apartment at 3.15 in the morning, it's very fishy indeed. Look, we told you. I know what you told me. A social call. Huh. Look, Lieutenant, it's like Danny says. We were at his place till a quarter to three. Just talking, see? We decide to visit this guy, George Fenimore. We get there at three. Will you shut up? Okay, if I smoke now. All right. There's a lot about this that you guys aren't telling me, and I'm going to find out about it, but it's the last thing I do. Now, get out of here. And I want you all back at this office at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Formal? Go on, beat it. Hey, Waldo, when you were going over Fenimore's apartment, did you find any money? Money? Oh, 
you didn't, huh? No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What money? How much money? Well, that, uh... Oh, it was really nothing. I... Well, I... As a matter of fact, I had just loaned him $20, and I was hoping he didn't die broke. Daddy. Hmm? $20? Yeah. You loaned it to him? Oh, I guess I shouldn't mention it at a time like this. Are you ashamed of me? There isn't anything else you'd like to tell me, is there? No, uh... It does make me look kind of cheap, doesn't it? But you know how it is, cost of living going Go up. Go on, beat it. Four o'clock. Yeah, yeah, look at here. What'd you tell him? Nothing, I just asked him if he found any money in Fenimore's apartment. Yeah? Hey, you got a match, Dandy? You gotta admit, though, it does look like Fenimore's the guy who passed the counterfeit. Why? Nice toss. How do you figure it looks like Fenimore's the one who passed the money? Well, somebody killed him. Can you think of any better reason for killing a man than a hard... Th I was shooting with? Right. Six. I'm going to tail him. You go down to the lab and get the report. You made it. Six straight passes. What do you guys think you're doing out here? Ice water. Shooting craps in a police station. With loaded dice, too. Yeah. How about those dice, Danny? Are you accusing me oh, of... Oh, don't be silly. Those dice were mine. They're from my club. Matches. Oh, look, uh, I may be a little thick, but... Uh... Don't you get it? No. No, you gave me loaded dice to shoot with. No, I didn't, but someone else did. It all figures now. It does? Of course, Vic. If Fenimore was going to pass you counterfeit money, he'd have to be sure you were going to win plenty. He'd have to be working with someone to make certain you'd win. Hey, the guy who gave you the dice. Right. Now, come on. I'll get you a hundred grand back. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe we'll find the guy who killed Fenimore. sick in the hospital. Ah, oh, no, not that one. What are you doing here, Mr. Steele? He wants his hundred thousand dollars. What? You've got it. Hand it over. I don't know what you're talking about. One hundred thousand dollars. Let's have it. I don't have it. I don't know anything about it. You took it off Fenimore when you killed him. Oh. You hear me? I swear I haven't... I'm getting mad. You better give it to him, Stan. No. All right, get against that wall. What happened to you? You know the lieutenant took my gun away? Go on, against the wall. Man, you're crazy. You can't get away with it. Watch me. Move. Somebody will hear the shots. By the time they get here, I'll be ten blocks away. Go on, get against that wall. Danny. Danny, open up. One hundred thousands. Come on and open up. Oh, come on in, Waldo. It's open. Got change for five? 
place is kind of quiet with the back room closed down. Yeah. Uh-oh. Here comes Sherlock. Oh, hello, Walter. Oh. Sorry, Willie. How about that? Have a drink? What is it? Foreign Legion. No, thanks. Personally, I hate to close up your back room. Oh, sure. You got my killer for me, and I appreciate it. But you know what the law is as well as I do. Yeah. Well, have a glass of warm milk. You'll sleep better. I could impound this, but you did me a favor here. A hundred grand you've got to give back to Vic. Plus a thousand to the policeman's welfare fund. Hmm. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> me too. Good night. Good night, Waldo. Good night, Lieutenant. Milk. No, he's got an 80-proof cow. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. Well, that makes me feel so good. It does? Mm, it certainly does. Look, uh, why don't we get out of here? Go to oh, I'd love to, Mr. Daniels. Fine. But I've got a date. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm supposed to meet him right here. I'm a little disappointed in you, Janice. Well, I'm truly sorry, Mr. Daniels, but maybe we could make it some other time. Hello, Danny. Hi. Uh, hello, Andrew. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, uh, Janice, you remember Mr. Steele, Mr. Phipps? Oh, of course. Well, here's your money, Vic. Let's a grand for the policeman's welfare fund. Thanks. Well, let's go, baby. Uh, good night, Mr. Dandy. Hey. Is that your date? Something wrong? Oh, no. no. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, uh, thank you. Mmm, you smell good. What kind of cologne you use? It's called Shetland. My mother gave it to me. Sweet, wasn't she? You really put sand in this? <laughs> ah, partially. Just looks like sand. Tastes like sand. Getting kind of crowded in here, isn't it? Yeah. presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Frank Lovejoy, brought to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer organization who make, sell, and service Singer Sewing Machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through the Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the famous Red S trademark on the window. In The House Always Wins.
Beans. Beans? Boston baked beans. Mm. You hungry, Monty? Chicken on a king. When you get the dessert, let me know. Just giving you a sample of what I go through tending bar here. Guy a while ago tossed this beans chicken routine at me. Big, friendly guy. Explained that when he drinks, he likes to think about food. That's the worst coffee I ever tasted in my life. What did you do, make it with soapy water? Soapy water? <laughs> Wash the glasses with it. They haven't been washed since you came to work here. How do you know what soapy water tastes like? I sing in the shower. Well, you must have swallowed a cake of soap. I make good coffee, and I don't like your cracks about it. I shall file your complaints, Monty, around to those by patrons complaining that I have a chimpanzee tending bar. Busy night, Jackson? Uh, dreadfully busy. I was just taking the pottery to the kitchen. Mm, yes, I should have bought you a compass for Christmas. The kitchen's that way, the gambling room's that way. It must have been that green salad that I was tossing. It always makes me terribly dizzy. Oh, I'm sure that's what it was. But no gambling. Ten years ago, you wouldn't have spoken to me like that, William. Ten years ago, you had money. Don't you ever learn? No gambling. Gambling? Me, William? Why, I've reformed. I wouldn't dream of doing anything like that. Well, eight to five, you would. Covered. Forget it. Forget it. Just stay away from the back room. Uh, Willie. Yeah? Have you had your coffee yet? Well, I had what Monty calls coffee. I wouldn't endorse it, though. Why? It was just that I hate to see a man shocked on an empty stomach. Take a look at table 19. Hasn't changed much, has she? When's she come in? About half an hour ago. Monty saw her, too. He tried to talk me out of telling you, but I, I'm not the type of person to keep a secret. It makes one so uh, secretive. It's been 10 years. At least. You know the people she's with? I haven't the slightest. She recognized you or Monty? That's John Stable. She wouldn't have noticed us. Besides, 10 years ago, I wasn't a waiter. 10 years ago, Monty wasn't a bartender. For him, it was a step up. Just as pretty as a... Well, you have two feet and a mouth. Walk over and talk. You might like to forget our past. Go find out. Well, it must be rather taxing to be a disreputable character. At least I'm an honest waiter. My friends talk to me. It's because you owe them all money. Go on, move. You sent for me, sir? Why, no, I didn't. Uh, you must have the wrong table. You're not our waiter. Oh, but I am. Surely you haven't forgotten me. Oh, no, that couldn't be. You couldn't have forgotten me. No, you've made a mistake. Excuse me, sir, there are some crumbs on the table. There's one thing I hate is crumbs on the table. It makes everything look so crummy. Never let it be said that Mr. Willie Dante ran a crummy restaurant. No, sir, his place is one of the best friends may meet. That is, uh, if old friends want to meet, as it were. Will you please go away? The table's fine. We'd just like to finish our meal. And Mr. Willie Dante would want you to finish your meals. Um, that is Mr. Willie Dante over there. I feel like singing Hearts and Flowers. You what? I sing as well as wipe crumbs. Here comes Mr. Dante. No, I'd advise you to take the matter up with him. Having trouble here? No, he just left. Oh, Jackson. Well, you'll have to forgive him. He certainly ought. Well, you meet my bartender. But you're Mr. Daddy. That's right. Well, this is a pleasure. My name is Sims, Frank Sims. How do you do, Mrs. Sims? And Mr. and Mrs. Turner. Thank you. I'm a little busy right now. I just dropped over to see if everything was satisfactory. Is everything satisfactory, Mrs. Sims? Yes, it's quite satisfactory. Now, nice place here, Mr. Daddy. Well, thank you. If I'm uh, speaking out of term, forgive me. But I hear one can get a uh, run for his money in your back room. Well, there has been some rumor to that effect, yes. Well, I understand uh, you have to be careful, but, well, I haven't shot a fast game of craps in a long time. Hmm. Then, since you're rusty, it might be to our advantage. 
Slide through that hallway, first door past the exit. Give this card to the man on the door. Huh. I can't thank you enough, Mr. Dante. Maybe your money can. Nice to have met you. Seems like a nice fellow. Yes. Friends again? She's married. Another shot of caffeine? No, thanks. I'm still blowing bubbles from the last one. I wonder when she got married. Uh, I told Jackson not to tell you she was here. I was afraid this had happened. Yeah. After all, Willie, it's your own fault. You ran out on her. That was a war, remember? Well, you could have written. I was too busy making mud pies and foxholes. Every time I wrote, wrong number. No forwarding address. Stop. You're breaking my heart. What heart? You haven't had one since you stopped carrying the ace of hearts up your sleeve. So I was a frustrated child. I lost my rattle trying to draw a royal flush. Thought you didn't want another cup of coffee. I'm sad. I want to poison myself. Well, at least this tastes like coffee. I don't know why it should. This I really made with soapy water. You know you can be replaced. What do you mean? I'm a good bartender. You couldn't make a good dikery if it came pre-frozen. Must be out of my head, an ex-safe cracker for a bartender. Haven't got enough trouble with an ex-millionaire for a waiter. And on top of that, the only girl I like gets married. You're always griping, always griping. Well, while I'm griping, how about cleaning up this place? What are you talking about? It's spotless. Oh, sure, sure. You can't see a single spot for all the dust. Now, look, Willie, I don't have to take this all the time. I can quit, you know. Put that in writing, will you? You know I can't write. That's why I ask you. Money down. Here it goes, ma'am. Put your money down. Hello again, Mr. Daddy. Or may I call you Willie? How much have you lost? Mm, nearly 2,000. You can call me anything you like. <laughs> Am I good for another 500? I don't know, are you? You'll get it back every cent. I know, I know. Have fun. Thanks. Pretty fast evening. Well, that's the way I like it. The faster the better. You say that again, Willie. Especially since you put me on percentage. Well, that's a good report, Bob. Thanks. Yes, sir. Good evening, Bob. Oh, good evening, Mr. Hall. Uh, things are not so good tonight. Hmm. You better give me change for a thousand. Well, maybe new money will give you better luck. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Ten fifties. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Five nickels, please. It's all right. You can bite it. Thank you. Oh, pardon me. Where are the slot machines? Oh, I'm sorry. We have no slot machines. Oh. Oh. We do have a roulette and dice tables. There's a limit there. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind. I... I'd rather go someplace where there's no limit, you know. I was just looking for the boss. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I don't have to swear. I'm the soul of innocence, believe me. I did not come back here to gamble. I came back to give you a message. Well, don't wait around for a tip. You'd lose it all to the first spin of the wheel. I can tell by your attitude that you wish our relationship to continue on an employer and employee basis. I shall conform. Gone are the days of our beautiful friendship. Gone... Oh, are... shut up. What's the message? There's a woman waiting to see you in your office. Is it a mother who wants a daughter's money back, or is it a daughter who wants more for her money? <laughs> Joe, faithful employee, laughs. It wasn't that funny. Who's in my office? Lucy. Shall I carry you? Hello, Willie. Lucy? It's been a long time. Yeah. I waited. For a long time, I waited. I'm sorry. It was fun in Vegas. It's not much prestige working in a gambling house, but it was fun as long as you were dealing. But then you dealt me a bad hand, Willie. You left. 
Oh, Lucy, I could make excuses, but what good would it do? I said I'm sorry, and I really am. Not only for the pain I caused you, but for the pain I caused myself. But you summed it up when you said it's been a long time. It's history. And this place only deals in mathematics. Willie Dante. You know, it's funny. When I saw the sign out in front, Dante's Inferno, it didn't register. I didn't know this was your place. Oh, glad you dropped in. Well, I can just stay a minute. I said I had a headache, that I was going to the powder room. Well, I don't want to be a headache. Maybe you better run on back. Your husband might be worried. He isn't my husband. He just brought me along to make it look good. Willie, I didn't know this was your place. Believe me. Hmm. You seem upset. What is it? Well, you should be upset. Frank and his partner, they both have guns. They intend to hold up your gambling room, Willie, tonight. You sure about this? I'm sure. I was even going to be a part of it. You? Oh, oh, I see. No. No, you don't see. Things have changed. It hasn't been easy. I know a lot of girls who get along without becoming hold-up artists. Well, I've never done anything like this before. Where did you meet these characters? I was behind in my rent, broke. Frank loaned me some money. Mm, I can guess the rest. Well, this was to settle my debt, and Frank promised me enough to go somewhere and get a new start. And uh, you didn't think too badly about holding up a gambling house? Well, the fact that it was a gambling house helped. Made it seem not quite so bad. I'm sorry, Willie. No. I'm grateful. Glad you warned me. No, please, don't make me feel lower than I am. I didn't tell you for money. I know why you told me, honey. Consider this a loan. Just to help you get that start someplace else. Now, you better go on back. String along with him and I'll handle it. Be careful. I always am. Lieutenant Waldo. <laughs> well, Mr. Dante, how nice of you to call. Somebody trip on your dice and break his neck? A couple of guys are going to stick up this place and I need some help. Now I've heard everything. A year ago, I spent all my time trying to prove you have a table in that back room. Every time I raid you clean. Now you want me to help you protect a joint that doesn't even exist. You think I'm crazy? Waldo, my answer would only hurt your feelings. Now tell me, what would happen if somebody created a disturbance here in the restaurant? Well, that's a different story. Okay, okay, then. We'll handle it. You come on over here and pick them up in the cafe for disturbing the peace. You can't hold them long on that. No, but chances are these boys have long records. Oh, Waldo, be grateful, will you? I'm probably delivering two desperate criminals till you're wrapped up in a ribbon. What do you want me to do, put you on the payroll? Why not? I got three of your men on mine. They are not. You don't have any of my men on your payroll. Okay, okay, so I'm kidding. Someday, Willie. Someday I'm going to wrap that crap table around your brain. You'll have to find it first. What, the crap table or your brain? <laughs> oh. When you've finished with your convulsions, comedian, I'd like to have you come over here. After all, I am a taxpayer, you know. That's right, yeah. And I'll have Monty keep an eye out for you. Yeah, yeah, I know, doesn't he always? Mm -hmm. All right, Waldo. Goodbye. One grass over. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I want you two to keep your eyes open. I'm expecting Waldo and a few other boys. 
Uh-oh. Want me to flash the back room? No, I called them, told them to come over. Just let me know when they get here. Well, that's a nice way to announce your retirement. Well, wasn't a bad job while it lasted. Did your best. The evening's really humming, Willie. Never mind the report. Maybe a little trouble later. For instance, the pen. Tear gas. Just press the clasp. Check. See the group, the corner of the table, girl in the gray dress? Yeah. See the man she's with? Yeah. If he comes over, get the pen ready. Check. Excuse me, please. Come in. I'll go after for these nickels. An exciting place you got here, laddie. Exciting place. Thank you. But never have I met such a poor sport, though. What do you mean? The gentleman I was matching nickels with. Fast plays here, Mr. Dandy. Ah, you said you wanted a fast game, Mr. Sims. So I did. Don't tell me you lost all your money. No, matter of fact, I haven't played yet. Maybe I am a little too rusty after all. That's too bad. Of course, I'm uh, not too rusty for a good game of 21. I see your blackjack table there. Well, you're very observant. I'd enjoy playing with the owner. Do you deal 21, Mr. Dandy? That's the way I got started in this business. Well, then. All right. What a crowd you have here, Mr. Dandy. Yeah, it's a good night. Is it? Has been so far. Take your best, lady. Beautiful woman, my wife, don't you think? Lovely. Poor darling had a headache earlier. Oh, it's too bad. Yes. Insisted on going to the powder room alone, wouldn't let Betty go with her. Hmm, imagine that. Gone a long time. Long enough for me to be worried about her, so I sent Betty to see if she was all right. It's very considerate. Betty saw her coming out of your office. It's for rent. We can drop the pretense, Mr. Dante. Why Lucy warned you, I don't know. But I do know you're wise. I saw you warning your boys. Well, then, if your brain is as sharp as your eyesight, you better clear out of here. Sorry. I have plans. So had Napoleon. Blackjack. You've got quite a bunch of husky boys around here. Oh, they just love the gobble of punks like you. Not tonight, they don't, Mr. Dandy. I have a gun under this table, Dandy. I figure with a gun on you, the odds are about even. Now, Mr. Sims, you know better than that. My place, the house always wins. You'll see. Now, you and I are walking over to the teller's cage. I figure with this gun on you, there won't be much trouble. Come on. I didn't think I know this game. Oh? Play it cool, Dandy. Stick around, live and learn. Only two cards? The deck lasts longer that way. Well, it's a game after my own art. Well, we're a very thrifty bunch around here. Hit me. I'd love to, Mr. Sims. Hard. Stand. Pay 21. Care to play? No. Now, Mr. Sims, we can't keep the game exclusive, can we? It's a very simple game, Scotty. All you do is try to get as close to 21 without going over, and if you get an ace in the face card, you win three times your money. Uh, three times, is it? That's right. The odds just went up. Move around. I'll deal your hand just for fun. Turn him over. Well, Blackjack, you went right off the bat. <laughs> Larry, uh, seldom do I refuse money, but you said just now that the deal was for fun. Oh, sorry, there's a house rule against playing for fun. I thought of it just as I turned the cards. Come on, sit down. This is your lucky night. You want fair and square. Forget it, Dandy. He doesn't want to play. I'll be deciding that for myself, if you don't mind. And since I'm playing with the house... You. I'll watch. Turn him over. Well, <laughs> Blackjack again. There you are. You handle those cards very well, Mr. Dandy. I'd say it has a great deal to do with my living, wouldn't you, Mr. Sims? Don't be too sure. Our lucky friend here won't play forever. Did you ever see a Scotsman leave a game when he's winning? Uh, let's talk in a little more action, if you don't mind. I uh, think you have a queen there. 
Now, all you need is an ace. Morning. On your feet, Buster. Thanks, Scotty. I'll explain it to you someday. You treat your guests kind of rough, don't you, laddie? He was trying to cheat. A moment now. Don't you be trying to cheat me. What do you mean? It's an ace. I've won again. Well, you were right, Willie. We've been looking for those two guys for quite a while. I see, Waldo. I did you a favor. Gee, thanks. I'll recommend you to the mayor for a medal. Oh, never mind. I'll recommend myself next time he comes in. Okay, okay. Cut the kidding. Where's the other one? The other what? The other girl. We only picked up three people in your office. They say there was another girl. Another girl, hmm? Another girl. Huh? Uh, Jackson. Yes, sir? Did you, uh, see the other girl? What other girl? The one Waldo wants. Look, Willie. I'm afraid I can't help, but if Lieutenant Waldo wants a date, I suggest he contacts the Lonely Hearts Club. Ah, uh, skip it. Give me the cigarette girl, will you? I need a smoke. And Waldo? The girl, the other girl. The, uh, oh, thank you. Amanti, have you got a girl stashed behind the bar? Fresh out? Too bad. You got her in the back room? What back room? Oh, no. He must be in the storage room, you know, the empty one. Oh, yeah, yeah, storage room. Ooh. That's right, Waldo. Storage room, the empty. I'll show it to you. Come on. Oh, as soon as I get my cigarettes. You wanted me, Mr. Dante? I certainly do. You look lovely. Thank you. Would you like to smoke, Waldo? Oh, uh, by the way, here are the keys to my car. Would you mind moving it for me? If it's parked outside in an hour zone, I wouldn't want to break the law. Of course. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, you better stop and get my overcoat. It's kind of cold. I wouldn't want you to catch pneumonia. See you later. Later. Yeah. Nice girl. Yeah, I'm sure. Now look, Willie. Oh, Waldo, Waldo. Don't tell me, let me guess. You want to find the other girl? All right, all right. Tear the place apart. Okay, Willie, okay. So the girl got away. But I'm not sore because I'm going to close down this racket. That's enough for tonight. <laughs> Stop dreaming, Waldo. How are you going to close me down? No evidence? No witnesses? No witnesses. Suppose I were to tell you I have a man who's willing to swear he was in your back room earlier. A man who keeps his eyes open and has a very good memory. Hey, Sandy. Oh, no. Hi, Letty. I'm sorry I'm forced to give evidence again yet, but such are the fates. But Scotty, you didn't lose. You won. Why do this to me? Uh, well, I didn't exactly win. You see, I have to turn the cash and the cards over to Lieutenant Waldo as evidence. Evidence? I, you see, the only money that I can call my own is the paycheck that I get regularly from the police department. I've been getting it for the last 15 years, ever since I joined the force. Oh, plant, what a sneaky. Ah, 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 all's fair, Willie. I'm sorry, laddie, awfully sorry. Uh, come on, Lieutenant Waldo, I'll show you where the room and the equipment is. Who was it said the house always wins? Marty, bring me a cup of poison. And tell Jackson to pack up, we're moving. <laughs>
Good evening, Mr. Dante. Well, I'm married to your husband. Well, not so good, uh, since you had to close the back room. People seemed to smoke more when they were gambling. Oh, not so. Well, we'll have to try to open up again real soon so you can sell more cigarettes. Wonderful. Let me know, and I'll go out and order myself a brand new costume. No, I wouldn't get extravagant there. I'll just buy you a spool of thread and you can weave it yourself. what little there is. Listen, Wooly, if you're just going to run a restaurant, you better get a chef that can cook. This place is going to be haunted. Oh, I don't know. Men who hate their wives might bring them down to drink your coffee. Now, let's not start that again, huh? A jigger of scotch, two fingers of gin, a slug of vodka, and a spray of dry vermouth over the rocks. Only an idiot would order that. Only an idiot would work here without wages. The concoction is for me. I need a drink. Give me a glass of water, Money. And at least put an olive in it. Who can afford olives? Oh, will you two shut up? You know, the last time Lieutenant Waldo closed the gambling room, you opened up again within a couple of weeks. We're waiting, Willie. Yeah, what's the delay? I can explain it with one beautiful word. Money. Uh, the green stuff my rabbit used to eat. That's lettuce. That's money. When I was wealthy, my pets had nothing but the best. I remember one year I was sailing for Europe. Oh, and my come rabbit off of it. And they... Come off of it. You lost your money in Vegas trying to make nine the hard way. Now we're both in the same boat, broke. Things really that bad, Willie? Couldn't afford a bingo set. I might be able to get you into the waiters' union. They welcome men of former position. If you don't get back to work, I'll kick you in your latter position. I was only trying to be of service. Uh, Mr. Dante, sir, your highness. You hear something, Money? Yeah, it sounds like somebody's reading Prince Valiant out loud. Oh, funny, funny, funny. I came back to give you a little information. And I had to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous... Back to Prince Valiant again. What's the point of interest, Nave? Two gentlemen who just came in. Table three. Matt Devlin. Yeah. This ship must really be sinking. Hey, Willie. Yeah, Benny here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen him fight many times. Just didn't recognize him standing up. <laughs> Always a good one for a joke, eh, Willie? Yeah. Here's one little slayer. Get out. It's a good thing you're in your own place. You wouldn't talk to me like that if we're in my joint. That's right, Matt. I wouldn't be caught in your rat hole. You run a crooked game and you got too many punks on your payroll. I still got money behind me, not just bluff. I'd like to help you out, Willie. Yeah, you always were the generous type, but no thanks. Go open a mission somewhere. Be smart, Willie. I'll make you a deal. I'll furnish the tables, the wheel, the whole outfit. I'll even stake you to an operating capital. What do I give you, my right arm? A 50-50 split of the profits. I like you, Willie. You get around. You got a good clientele here. No deal. Now get out. I don't even like your kind in here. You give the place a bad name. My phone number. In case you change your mind, give me a buzz. Okay, man, I'll keep this. I'd want to call up and borrow one of your boys and think about running a floor show for Halloween. <laughs> you should have quit fighting sooner. You're a foolish guy, Willie. You better think about my deal. Well, I thought it over. Now get out. Is this a private chat or can a tired cop horn in? Oh, hiya, Waldo. Rogue's gallery is just leaving. You should learn to use a knife and fork in a restaurant, Benny. These things are so clumsy. Yeah, I got me a permit. Sure, I know. Don't push us around, Lieutenant. We're not causing trouble. Willie? No, yeah, no trouble. The door's that way. The longer the bill. Are you digging customers out of the gutters these days? I didn't invite them in here. Same goes for you. I just want to check out. Well, follow me, follow me. Well, satisfied? <laughs> I guess so. It's awful, isn't it, huh? Every time I look at this empty room, it gets me. Right here. What gives, Willie? For the past few years, you open, I close. You open, I close. Monotonous, isn't it, huh? But this time, you stayed closed. Maybe I reformed. No, uh, it doesn't figure. Matt Devlin being here doesn't figure either. If I didn't know you better, you'd figure I'd be cooking up a deal in Devlin, huh? <laughs> oh, now, Walter, come off of you. know I don't play down in his league. Incidentally, speaking of that thief, how come you're always closing me down and his joint stays open? You tell me. Every time we plan a raid on Devlin, he's got his place clean by the time we get there. But we'll catch up with him one day. No, uh, where's your confidence, huh? Too bad you don't have me on the force. I'd put him out of business in a week. You? Sure. Like a good cop, I listen to television. You ought to hear me say, sorry, ma'am, real professional. Come off it, Willie. <laughs> I'd like to see you as a cop. 
You couldn't even write a traffic ticket. No? What's in it for me if I close Devlin down? Police escort for a week. I'll even ride a motorcycle myself. With a siren yet? With full siren. Maybe I can even get the mayor to ride in a sidecar. I know the mayor couldn't even get in a sidecar. Let's get out of here. It depresses me. Just be so pretty. Full of people, full of money. Willie. Hmm? We might joke about Devlin, but he's a real crook. Any tip you can give me on closing him down, I'd appreciate. Sorry, but being new on the force, I insist on cracking my first case alone. I'm serious. Well, am I? You know, well, I can just see myself speeding down Main Street with you in front of me on a motorcycle. Okay, make jokes. I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey, uh, careful little drink? Well, uh... You know, Willie, one of these days you're gonna ask me that question when I'm off duty. Are you ever off duty? Yeah. Hey, uh, Waldo. If you get the M.O., send me a code three and I'll put out a 106 and an APB. M-U-T-Z. Are you happy there's no game in the back? Mm. Well, he is, but I'm not. I had to get some backing someplace, money. What did Matt Devlin want? He wanted to buy in, but I'm not that desperate. Cup of coffee? I'm not that desperate either. I'll be in my office. Sleeping? No, I'm going to take a look at the books. I just love to see that red ink. It reminds me of your eyes. got to do with a bar being clean. Are you trying to say the English aren't clean? How dare you? Well, look, I didn't say anything. He's always criticizing. All I said was, ah, you... Oh, I forgot. Said you were going to clean up the bar. Oh, yeah, that's... How's business? I've seen more people in an elevator. Who's our remaining customer? I never saw her before, but of course it's my misfortune. She's beautiful, isn't she? Well, for once we agree on one thing. Anybody with her? Not unless he's hiding under the table. She came in alone about an hour ago. Well, I guess I'd better go tell her it's closing time. That's as good as an excuse as any. Hi. Hi, yourself. You must be Willie Daddy. That's right. Who must you be? Beverly. Beverly Hudson. Sit down. It's funny. I was just going to ask you to get up. It's closing time. You don't look like the kind of man who would turn out a little girl into the cold. You don't look like the freezing kind. It's a nice warm mink you have around your shoulders. Won't you change your mind and sit down? It just changed. <laughs> Dad, do you always sit alone in this bus? Do I look the type? That's why I asked. I came to see you. Oh. No flattery, I mean it. I read in the paper where the police closed your back room last month. Oh, so you came to see what an ex-gambler looked like. I knew what you looked like. It was a picture of you in the paper. A very handsome picture. <laughs> Aren't you nice? Uh-huh. You know, honey, I could sit and listen to things like this all night and all that, but uh, you're building up to something. What? Well, I found that when one has a great deal of money, one gets bored easily. This one wouldn't know. True. Why don't you dump all your money in the swimming pool and jump in? Sounds like a wonderful way to drown. I'm quite serious. I put money into prize fighters. I put money into plays. They both flopped. Tell me, uh, where do I figure in all this? I read about that huge fine you had to pay, and I, I got to thinking that you might be a little low on funds. Maybe that's why you hadn't opened up again. Clever girl. I think I can guess the rest. You're tired of plays, prize fighters. You like to own a gambler for a change. Oh, I don't want to own you, Mr. Danty. I doubt that any woman could, but I'd like to be your partner, finance you so that you could open up again. I, I think it might be exciting. Well, it would at least be different. There, you're a sweet little rich girl. I think I'll run along home and dream up another scheme. This isn't exactly the junior league. Really, no. Does having a woman for a partner disturb you so much you'd turn down a smart deal? I don't know. I've had a woman for a partner. I had a partner who was a woman. I never... You're serious, aren't you? 
Absolutely. Look, you need money. I have plenty. I think we might have quite a partnership. I want excitement. You know, I'm beginning to see this whole thing in a different light. Since you're so anxious to close up here, why don't we adjourn to my apartment and we can discuss it more completely? No, I have a little talk. Mm. We should get along fine. Make yourself at home. I've got the ice. Excitement. I just thought possibly you'd go to his club. Right not. Well, uh, anyway, I'm not going to keep his phone number. He wanted to finance me, too, just like you do. I've decided you're much prettier. You mean you're going to let me? Sure. You said you thought it might be interesting. I think it might be very interesting. Finish change your clothes, Tony. Get on the door. Ed, set up the table, then put change in the cage. We'll open an hour. Right, Willie. You sure you have enough operating capital? I could give you more. No, oh, you're popping up already. Forty thousand is okay. I just can't wait till they open. I feel all tingly. Sit down. Uh, no, no, it might be contagious. I'll see you later. Got a few things out to take care of. Hey, how am I going to come out even if you keep taking dough? Never comes out even anyway. You can't count, remember? Oh, God. I see a lot of our good customers here. Did you tell everybody we're opening up again? Yeah, but I still don't like it. Tough. Willie, go in partners with a dame. That's a sucker's plan. You know it. You even let her buy the tables. Oh, she said you had a friend who could get the equipment cheap, so I'll let her get it. It's her money. Think of a sucker, huh? Well, that makes two of you. My female partner thinks I'm a sucker, too. Don't tell me you and your beautiful angel had a fallen out. Oh, no, nothing like that. Not yet, anyway. But haven't you noticed her halo? Huh? It's on crooked. Those things always tilt slightly if you start growing horns. I'll come back later and explain it to you. Uh-uh. The boss says you ain't allowed back here. You always lose. My dear man, you touch me deeply. And now, if you will kindly untouch me, I will move forth to give Mr. Dante a message. That's why I'm here. Oh. A brilliant observation. Mr. Dante, two gentlemen, and I use the word loosely, are waiting to see you in your office. Excuse me? Of course. I'll just stay here and watch. Those two men, Sam Punks, have run the other night? Yes. Mm, I thought so. Bring me three cups of coffee, three cups of Monty's coffee. You must hate your visitors. Intensely. Ah. Hi, boys. Hi, Willie. 
sit down. Why should him stand up, if you don't mind? He said, sit down. Well, that's a pretty convincing argument. May as well make yourself comfortable. You're going to be here all evening. While you and your blonde girlfriend fleece all my customers, huh? <laughs> you catch on quick. I catch on a lot quicker than you think. I knew all along Beverly was using your money. No? Sure, it's a silly plan, the kind you'd dream up. You figured I'd go gaga about the dame, let her buy in as a partner, then you'd be all set. That's right. We'll clean up a mint one night and then move on. Sure, you can yell to the cops, but they can't do a thing. Oh, come off of it, Devlin. Tell that stooge to put that gun away. Why do you think I'll let you get away with it? I don't know, but I don't trust you. The gun stays on you. Go on, sit down. All right, have it your way. I said, they'll say it's a silly plan, and it wouldn't have worked unless I'd have wanted it to. Well, just for the sake of conversation, why would you want it to? You know, Matt, I hate to admit it, but it was a pretty good idea. The girl's kind of cute. When I found out she was working for you, I decided to play along. I just didn't want to ruin your fun by letting you know until now. Pretty smart, Willie. We got you in a hole and you try to cut yourself in. No dice. Oh, Matt, will you get some sense? So you got your crooked tables in my back room. Now tell me something. Who's going to operate them? I got my boys coming in. I got a big flash for you. Your boys have already been in and they're tied up in the alley. You think I'm stupid? Now look, you made me a business proposition. I just told you I accept it. Do you mean it? Well, if I didn't mean it, why would I let you put the tables back there? Now, if you keep me locked up in here, nobody's going to get anything. Okay, Willie, you got a deal. You win. No, 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 man. We win. Now, let's understand the deal. Your tables, your money, we split everything 50-50. Dante, you're getting smart. I was smart before you bought your first pair of loaded dice. Oh, one more thing. As long as the roulette table is rigged, I'll operate it. If my customers are going to be cheated, I want to be sure it's done by an expert. Do you not operate a leg switch? I was weaned on a rig table. Okay. But remember, not one wrong move. Your coffee, sir? What coffee? The coffee you told me to bring. Oh, this Texan drives me crazy. Jackson, this is the third time this week you brought in phony orders. You're a sick man. A sick man, but I... I, I, I I've had enough of you. You're finished. William, a joke's a joke, but... Well, uh, this is no joke, Buster. You're fired. I'll pay him off and see you in the back room. Give this card to Tony, I'll let you in the door. You won't regret this, Willie. I believe we'll make a lot of dough together. I sure hope. The coffee you down and get out of here. Willie, have you gone mad? I never felt better in my life, Jackson. Yes, but this talk about firing, why, you've been like a father to me. Like a son to me. I'm sorry, Papa. I'm getting out your severance pay. I are. The last of the Willie Danny fortune. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars, but I, I spend it all in one place. I shall protest no further. Tonight, we're going to start a new policy here at the club, Danny. Absolutely no limit at this particular table. Do you hear me? I'll tell you what we'll do, though. In order to get off to, a, to an exciting start, we will have a betting minimum. There will be no bets for the next half hour at this table under $5,000. <laughs> Very sorry. Very sorry, but for the next half hour at this table, only $5,000 bets will be taken. Do I uh, have any takers? One slide, please. Ah, we have one gambler. Any other takers? What is this, Daddy? This guy's your employee. Well, he was. I fired him, remember? Yeah, but $5,000 bets. Maybe he's been saving his tips. Any other takers? Get sent for trouble. I don't like this. Would you kindly place your bet, sir? Very well. 5000 on the black. $5,000 is being bet on the black, ladies and gentlemen. Gather on. Watch the action. $5,000, one little spin of the wheel. Here we go. Where will she drop? Number 26 in the black. Pay the man. 
Oh, no. Let it ride. It's only 10,000. Only 10,000, he said. Let it ride. Another spin of the wheel for $10,000. The winner is black, number 15. Pay the gentleman $10,000. You now have $20,000, sir. What is your desire? $20,000. Let it ride once more, please. The gentleman said, let it ride. $20,000 in one spin of the wheel. Good luck, sir. Come on, Benny. We're stopping this game. Hold it, gents. The boss wants to enjoy the action. Right from here. $20,000. And it came up black, number 28. Pay the gentleman $20,000. Let it ride. Let it ride, he said. Pardon me. Willie, we had 40,000 operating capital to start with. He's got it all now. The bank's clean. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but you broke the bank. Well, this never happened in Monte Carlo. Now, if you'd care to bet all your winnings against the property, furnishings and all, I'd be glad to put it up. Spin the ball, boy. You would be playing black, of course? Black. It is number 11, the winner. Here you are, sir, the deed. You win the place. You, sir, are a champion loser. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. The game is off. I suggest you wait until the new management has a chance to get organized. As for you, sir, you should go to your new office and lock the deed in your new safe. Splendid idea, my boy. Splendid. Well, tough luck. You'll never get away with this, Danny. Mad, it's all a gamble. So we lost. It's all in the game. We're still partners. Partners in what? He lost the operating capital I put up in the place besides. We're partners in nothing. Now, that's a pessimistic outlook. You hear that? That's a signal. Lieutenant Waldo and his boys on the way back to raid us. What? Cheer up, partner. I'll split the fine. Of course, Waldo will confiscate all your equipment, but, well, that's, that's life. Inside, folks. Well, welcome to the party, Waldo. We're just in time to dissolve a beautiful partnership. <laughs> and by the way, you better oil up that motorcycle. At least we put Devlin out of business. Yeah, but Waldo confiscated his equipment and all the money, and that still leaves us broke. I know, I got a dime in my pocket. That's enough for a good cup of coffee. Oh, cut it out, will you, Willie? Come, come. I don't like my help sitting around. What? As new owner of the premises, I must order you either to get busy waiting on the tables or to leave the establishment. Oh, wait a minute now. He won the joint. He's the boss. Fellas, Jackson. You will please address me as Mr. Jackson. And I'm his general manager. Both of you guys are out your rockers. Very well. I, I give you back your place, Willie, on condition that I'm allowed in the back room every now and then. After ten years, my losing streak is broken. I may win back my millions. Oh, face life, Jackson. The game is rigged. Ridiculous. Your place was saved by my good luck. <laughs> well, okay, fellas. Have it your way. Willie. Oh, excuse me. Got a date. Date? Yeah, aren't I glutton for punishment? Don't worry about it, though. We got a police escort. Shall we? Good night, boys. Olympic athlete Bruce Jenner joins Merv Griffin tonight at 6. Stay tuned now for The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring Richard Green. It's up next on KTSF.
brought to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through its company-owned Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the Singer and Red S trademarks on the storefront. for me? Don't be silly, Sam. What would I do with you if I won you? Have fun. Same shooter now. Let's shoot him in. That with him, better Well, good evening, Mr. Dante. Well, good evening. Good evening. You winning? Oh, so-so. I'm trying to work out a new system. I'm betting on my telephone number. Well, that sounds interesting. Oh, it is. First I bet on five, then three, two, one, and then five again. Five, three, two, one, five. Well, that's easy enough to remember. I call the Oakwood system. That's the prefix. Oakwood, five, three, two, one, five. Good. Simple? Yes. I'll have to try your system sometime. Fine, any time. Yeah, have fun. Five, five. Evening, Willie. How's it going, Ed? Slow at first. It's picking up, though. Here's the figure. Excuse Better. me, Mr. Dandy. Well, well, Mrs. Raymond. Nice seeing you again. We've missed you the last couple of months. Have you, Willie? But of course you have. I'm a good customer. Well, a good customer who's beautiful is always missed. Supposing I weren't such a good customer, Willie, would you still miss me? Go on, flatter me. I've lost a lot tonight. Sorry, dear. Only flatter the winners. That's so they come back tomorrow night and lose what they won. Well, the least you can do is give me a chance to recoup. Can I cash an IOU? Oh, any time, yes. Give me a tab, will you? Funny, you know, before I went to Miami, I won a little, lost a little. That trip south seems to have changed my luck. And it's all bad. Five thousand? Well, oh, certainly, yes, at a time. Did you enjoy your Miami vacation? It was an expensive tan. One of Mrs. Raymond's I owe you, Ed. Hope you don't need any more, dear. Good luck. Thanks. If I should lose again, though, a nice, quiet drink in your office would be very consoling. Anytime. Bring on your husband and we'll all have a drink. He never comes here. I know. Do you always play such a safe game, Mr. Daddy? Your chips are waiting, Mrs. Raymond. Oh, he said, that's nice. Don't fight. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Yes, sir. Will it be? Uh, I'd like to see the boss. Oh, I'm sorry. He's busy right now. Oh? Back room? What back room? Okay, okay. But I'm not a cop. Believe me. We had a nice old grandmother type in here one night. I believed her. Turned out to be the oldest policewoman on the force. <laughs> I understand. But look, Willie knows me. We were in the army together. He wouldn't mind my just dropping back to say hello. Huh? Nobody goes in the back room without an okay. Now, uh, be a nice guy and sit down, huh? Okay. But Willie isn't going to like the way I'm being treated. Why don't you go tell him to fire me? There he is now. At ease, Lieutenant. Hmm? Edwards. Hank Edwards. I was in your outfit. Oh, how are you, Edwards? Sit down. Be honest, Mr. Dandy. You don't remember me, do you? Well, your face is familiar, but there were a lot of guys in my outfit. I sure remember you, boy. I was AWOL once, and boy, did you ever chew me out. <laughs> I probably had a new uniform. You live in town? I do now. 
tell the truth, my luck's been pretty bad the last couple of years. I've moved around from place to place, just can't seem to get started. Well, that's too bad. Can you get a cup? No, he's young. Let him keep his health for a while. <laughs> I, uh, I'd like to ask a favor. Sure, how much you need? No, no, I don't want a loan. I, well, I'd like a job. Here? Yeah, I know about your back room, Mr. Dandy, and I've dealt a pretty sharp game in my time. I won't lose you any money. Well, you're right about the back room, but you're wrong about the operation. We don't have any sharp games. That boy's been with me a long time. Sorry, no openings. Look, I'll do anything. You've got a restaurant here. I'll even wash dishes. Mm, you must be desperate. Have a wait table? I've done everything. I don't care about that. Do you have a wait table? Sure. Okay, I'll give you a crack at it. Regular man's on vacation. If you work out, I'll keep you on when he gets back. Six o'clock tomorrow night. Thanks, Mr. Danny. I'll be right here on time. Okay, Edwards. Do you the same? Two scotch on the rocks. Scotch on the rocks. Come on, snap it up, will you? Look, Sonny. You get the tips for the speedy service, I get the ulcers. Relax, will you? Just trying to do a good job. Oh, evening, Mr. Daddy. Oh, how's it going, Hank? So far, so good. How's he doing? Oh, he's a regular speed demon. Next thing you know, he'll be wearing track shoes. We could stand a little speed around here. You're asleep on your feet all the time. Pick it up, will you? Yeah? No, he just came in. Back room. Yes, Ed? Oh, no, how much? Hmm. No, 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 you did right. Ask you to come to my office, will you? Yeah, right away. Send some coffee to my office. I want to suffer in private. I understand you want to see me, Willie. Business or pleasure? It's always a pleasure to see you, Mrs. Raymond, even on business. Come see. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Let's get to the point, Willie. I went to cash another IOU and your man called you. I take it my credit's being cut off. Well, <laughs> just temporarily for your own good. Let's see. Last night you dropped uh, 10,000. Tonight you dropped another 10. That's a lot of money. You don't think my notes are any good? No, oh, I didn't mean that. That's, uh, let's look at it this way. Before you went to Miami on your vacation, you didn't lose too much. Now, in two nights, you dropped 20,000. Your luck's turned bad. Why bucket and lose more? Isn't how I play my business? Entirely, yes. Just that when I can, I try to keep my customers from getting hurt. Why don't you stay away from the game for a while and try it again next week? All right, Willie. So ends our business discussion. Are you sure that's the only reason you wanted to see me? I'm afraid it is. You're afraid, but I'm not. Relax, Willie. I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Raymond, but you're still a bad credit risk. Gee, I, I'm sorry, I... Uh... Good night, Mr. Danty. I didn't know you were. No, that's I mean... all right, it's all right. But next time you come into my office, knock on the door. Put it down there. Oh, hey, Willie, it's about that time. Yeah. You lock up the bar yet? No, not yet. They're still hurting them out of the back room. Hey, you drank it all. Mm-hmm. Now I know how it feels to be embalmed. Kills you. Right? There's a guy outside who wants to see you. Who? I don't know. He had a couple of drinks at the bar, and he acts like he had a lot more before he came. What does he look like? Oh, he's an old codger. Too old to be drinking that much. Want me to tell him you left? No, it's all right. I'll see him. I'll come in. Okay. <sighs> Mr. Willie Danny. Better have a chair, Fred. You look like you need one. 
Don't call me a friend. You know who I am. No. No, you don't know. If you did, you wouldn't have let me in. You got me. The name is Raymond. You're getting scared, huh? Terrified? Try Smith. That makes me shiver, too. I'm Rita Raymond's husband. Oh, well, how are you? Thought you'd get away with it, didn't you? Well, you're gonna get what you deserve, Daddy. I uh, haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, Mr. Raymond. I think you ought to calm down a little. You can't make me shut up. I don't care who hears me. Now, look, look, this office is soundproof. All your yelling and screaming isn't going to disturb anybody but you. So go ahead, sit down. I told you you're going to get what you deserved. Now, you sit down. Put that thing away, you drunk. I'm sober enough to take care of you. You get my wife in debt here. Then you blackmail her. Now I'm going to settle a score. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? She told me all about it. About your threats to tell me. Oh, you're out of your head. There's only one way to deal with your kind, Daddy. I've had enough of this, Raymond. Put that thing away and get out of here, and I'll talk to you when you're sober. You're not going to talk to anyone any time, Daddy. All right. All right, Raymond, have it your way. I, uh... At least I think you'll let me explain a few things. I feel that maybe we could talk this out. I don't need to talk it out. My wife told me everything. You disgraced her. Now you're going to pay for it. Again, Daddy? No, I don't. I'll wait for Lieutenant Waldo. Lieutenant Waldo's out of town testifying on a case. He'll be gone a week. Oh, great. So that puts me in charge of the case. Good old Lieutenant Ritchie of the Hatchet Squad. Shave my head and split my pant leg. You know, we just might. Well, before you pull the switch, old boy, you better read up on your law, especially that part about self defense. Oh, yeah. You did say he fired at you first. How many times would you say he fired at you before you shot him? Well, three or four at a time like that who keeps score. Care to show me in your office just how it happened? How can I refuse? You have such a winning smile. Get him out of here. It's a private office. All right, Dandy. Now you say Raymond was standing about here, huh? That's right. Raymond was standing right there, and I was over there behind the desk. And he fired four times at you. That's right. Then when did he swallow the gun? Oh, you never could tell a good joke. The gun, Dandy. The gun this man was supposed to have fired at you with. Where is it? Well, how would I know? The last time I saw it was right there. I didn't touch anything. You sure he had a gun? Are you crazy? Of course he had a gun. Now, look. You shoot a man. Then you rig up some cock and bull story about him firing at you four times. Oh, what do you mean? You said Raymond fired at you four times. Well, he did. All right. Where are the bullet holes? Well, I was right over there and he sh Go ahead and look around. We've gone all over this whole room. No bullet holes. Let's go downtown, Dandy.
All right, Dandy, I'm waiting. I told you exactly what happened. Ah, I want the truth. Now, look at the facts. Man's in the hospital, he may die, and you admit you shot him. In self-defense. That's where the facts cross you up. We didn't find any gun, we didn't find any bullet holes. I've been thinking about that. The gun was loaded with blanks. What? Well, the man shot four times. The only way you can shoot a gun four times without leaving bullet holes has got to be loaded with blanks. All right, just one question. Why? I was afraid you were going to ask that. Your story gets cuter and cuter. Keep talking. You just might hang yourself. Well, it's not a bad idea, considering the company I'm in. Lay off the comedy and don't give me that blank gun routine. A guy might threaten you with a blank gun, but he wouldn't start shooting it. Now, I want some straight answers. Just what was there between you and Mrs. Raymond? She was a customer, that's all. Uh-huh. She's at the hospital right now with her husband. I spoke to her on the phone. She said you got pretty friendly with her. Well, I guess she told her husband that, too, but there was no truth in it. She also told me that one of your waiters could back her up in her story. A guy by the name of Hank Edwards. I talked to him, too. He said he busted in on you and Mrs. Raymond earlier this evening in your office, right? Oh, for crying out loud. Well, I guess it could look like that to him, but it was a business discussion. Hello. What? All right. Yeah. That was your lawyer. He's got you free for the time being. Well, I hate to cheat and run, but you must come down to my place sometime, Richie. Let me grill you on my barbecue. Don't get too smart. You got a high-priced lawyer, he knows all the answers. But believe me, if Raymond dies, you're going to need more than a smart lawyer. You're going to be up on a murder charge. Hi, Mr. Dandy. I, I'm glad to see you're not in jail. Hi, Hank. Well, sure. Anything I can do to help? No, no thanks, thanks. You might as well run along. Okay, good night. Good night. Uh, Hank, uh... Well, I left you on guard at my office door tonight. You didn't nobody in, did you? Oh, huh? no one. Thanks. Good night. Good night. What does he mean, nobody went in the office? How'd that gun get out? If you ask me, he took it. Oh, I don't know. Certainly had a chance to, but why did he do it? Doesn't make sense. I don't know why you hired that guy in the first place. I didn't like him right off. Since when were you a good judge of people? I had him figured for trouble right away. Too bad he didn't stay in Miami. Oh, forget it. Wait a minute. I just made that coffee. Miami. Hmm? What do you mean Hank should have stayed in Miami? Well, that's where he worked for. He came up here. Sure? That's what he told me. I asked him where he got the suntan. Oh, someone else has a good suntan, too. Mrs. Raymond. She just got back from Miami two weeks ago. Oh? So maybe Hank has a good reason for taking the gun after all. Rita and Hank in Miami alone. <laughs> oh, Willie, you've been taken. I don't get it. I was just beginning to myself. Lieutenant Ritchie told me that Mrs. Raymond was at the hospital with her husband. We shouldn't have any trouble. What are you talking about? Let's do some housebreaking, just like old times. Housebreaking? No, sir, oh, not me. Oh, come on now. You were breaking in houses and other kids were breaking in rattles. So I had a sordid childhood, so I reformed. Well, don't worry. If, if you go to jail, I won't forget you. Oh, no? No, no. We'll probably both share the same cell. Come on. <laughs> hey, Willie. Quiet. But this is illegal. When did that ever bother you? Take a look in the bedroom. Nobody. Good, good. Look, Willie, what are we doing here? Whenever I break into a house, I like to know why. Just a little search, and Marty, if we're lucky, we won't have it. Somebody's coming down the hall. Come on. What are you doing here? The rooms at the Y were all filled. Get out or I'll call the police. My, 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 hot chili, Monty, stir up the fire. Maybe Mrs. Raymond will thaw out. You shoot my husband, then you come to my home. What kind of a man are you? Sit down, dear. Warm yourself with the fire now. Sit right there. Monty, keep an eye on her. Which one? The good one. What are you doing? Taking inventory. You know, you surprised me, Mrs. Raymond. I figured the ever-loving wife to be at the hospital with her husband. 
I just left him. He's out of danger. That's too bad for you. What do you mean? Well, your plan called for your husband to die. You're not making sense. No. It didn't make any sense to me either. First, I figured Hank took the gun, but I didn't know why. Who is Hank? Now, don't act dumb with me, dear. You know who Hank is. Where'd you meet him, honey? Where else? Miami. That's right. He's young, not afraid to take a chance. Willie, what are we looking for? Ask Mrs. Raymond. Mrs. Raymond, what How are we... How have you arrested for this, both of you? Look, lady, I just came along for the ride. I... That's the proof I needed. Look at them. Blanks. Blanks? Mm. Blanks that Mrs. Raymond put in her husband's gun. That's ridiculous. It's silly. Silly for you to take a chance like this, dear. You and Hank want to get rid of your husband, so you get him drunk and tell him a lot of lies about me. Get him mad enough at me that he comes out of my office and takes a shot at me. And he don't like to get shot. You don't take any chances. Load up the gun with blanks, knowing that if someone shoots at me, I'll shoot back. Oh, I don't like being a patsy, dear. I'm not going to listen to any more of this. No, but I think Lieutenant Ritchie will. He's twice as stubborn as Waldo. I'll take her in. You call Ritchie and tell her to pick up Hank at home. Right. Uh -huh. Hank isn't home, Willie. I hung around your place after our talk. I figured you could stand with some watching. Don't try anything. The gun isn't filled with blanks this time. Well, looks like you win the second deal, Hank. I told you this guy was trouble. Why did you hire him, stupid? Me? Oh, no, I don't take the rappy. He was your friend. All right, drop the small talk. Yeah, that money's a drop the small talk. Yeah. Let's talk about something serious, like attempted murder. Oh, uh, my favorite subject. I'll, I'll never forget the time I was an apprentice safecracker in Pasadena. Glendale. Quiet. Open the door, Rita. Let's take him outside. All right, outside. So, uh, can't we stay here by the fire a little while? It's kind of cozy. And it's cold outside. Move. Yeah, I think he means it. Well, seems like he does. Come on, move, or I'll give it to you right here. I wouldn't want it in here, would you? I wouldn't want it any place. Move. I'm moving. I'm moving. Get over there, dear. Mind to get Richie on the phone. Tell him I got a new waiter for the prison mess hall. What's she gonna do? About ten years. Sometimes. Hey, Marty, good coffee. <laughs> it's about time I received my just due. <laughs> no kidding, it's hard to believe, but it's delicious. Well, really? Have some more. Oh, love it, love hey, it. Hey, Marty, you didn't pay me enough. Get, get out of here, will you? Come on, you're too young to be. But, here. Marty, get lost, will you? What is this, hmm? Come on, scram, huh, kid? Honey, you didn't pay me enough. A quart of coffee costs a dollar ten. What's this about coffee? He ordered a quart of coffee from the drugstore next door, but he didn't pay me enough. Oh, uh, yes, son. Keep the change. Gee, thanks. It's okay, it's okay. Live a little. Yes, sir, Monty, this is certainly delicious coffee. Look, Willie, uh, I was only You know, I just happen to think that we're short of bus boy. From now on, you're picking up the dirty ones. Smart guy. Just because you throw bullets in the fire and capture the villain. I saw Hoot Gibson do that in a western, and he can ride a horse yet. Giddy up, boy.
Daddy? Bye. Oh, Willie. Hmm? More. Another one? Well, some men play golf. Keep your meter running. You're liable to make a fortune. Mm, pay the man another quarter and let's go around again. I just love these roller coasters. Honey, I'm a working man. I'll call you in the morning on the telephone. Mm -hmm. Tommy, pay the cabbie and tell him to take the lady home. If a batty gets paid, I'd be glad to volunteer. Oh, you're just an apprentice boy. Live and learn. What can I learn parking cars all night? That's how I got my start. But the cars I park don't have brunettes in them. Oh, patience, patience. Good night, dear. Mr. Dent. Hmm? Well, thank you, dear. What would I do without you? About as much as you do with me. You know, someday it might be fun to put this on you instead of take it off. My, the natives are restless tonight, aren't they? You sound just like Tommy the doorman. Have you met Tommy? He reminds me of my kid brother. Well, just a thought. statement. Of course I showed up. If I hadn't, you'd be standing here talking to yourself. So what? I do it all the time. One tequila. Oh, I know you. No, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess. Dante. Willie Dante. Well, it's very nice to see you again. No, you haven't changed a bit. Well, what detained you, Willie? Blonde, brunette, or a traffic ticket? Or both. Or all three. Let's be imaginative. Why don't you two shut up? I don't know why I ever open up a place like this. A lovesick doorman, an ambitious hat check girl on the main floor at Olsen and Johnson. I should have stayed a trumpet player. Where did you play, Willie? Santa Anita? Why don't you go wait on the table? I shall do so, but first, if you can concentrate on business, there's a young lady in booth five. I think you should speak to her. Oh, kind of cute. I'll have to meet her. I'm not acting as a talent scout. Besides, the young lady is married. She came in alone. She wants to get in the back room. I'll go talk to her. She's from Texas. It's okay. I understand the language. I'll just walk over to the country. Hey! It was for me. Oh, I'm Willie Dante. I truly am sorry, sir. But not only am I a married woman, but I never do talk to strange men. Well, I won't say that I'm not a little strange at times, but one of my waiters said you wanted to get in the back room. I own the place. Oh, you're that Willie Dandy. There's more. Well, you never can tell. Since Stuart and I came to this city, I've met two men with the exact same names as folks we know back home. Isn't that remarkable? You seem like a gentleman, Mr. Dandy. And since you are the owner here, I'd consider it an honor if you'd be my guest and sit a spell at my table. Thank you. I do have a problem. You see, Stuart met some men at the hotel the first week we were here. And they're the nicest men. And they like to play cards and gamble. And Stuart likes to play cards and gamble. And Tell me, dear, these uh, two men your husband met at the hotel, uh, the ones who like to play cards, they're the same ones with the names like the folks back home? Why, yes. Johnny Smith and Bob Brown. How do you know that? Dear, about the only advice I can give you is to take Stuart by the hand and uh, tell him just one thing. Never gamble with strangers in a big city. You've never been in the big city before? Oh, no. And neither has Stuart. Oh, he was always too busy with the oil wells his father left him. Oh, you know how it is. One oil well comes in right after another, and you're always on the go. Hmm, that's rough. Um, well, I still hate to see two kids get hurt even in the crankcase. Oh, but Stuart doesn't gamble for money. It's for the sport. Well, then he should make sure he's playing with other sports. Tell me what you do. You bring Stuart over here tomorrow night, and you can learn while he plays. If he really likes to gamble, we'll at least give him an honest run for his money. I'll ask Stuart to come over tomorrow night. He just might say yes. Oh, you like Stuart. He's the smartest man. Say so you're here on your honeymoon? Yes. And your name was... Uh... Oh, Molly. Molly Edwards. Oh, well, Mrs. Edwards, I... You know, I'm Mrs. Baskin. I thought you said it was Edwards. You asked me what my name was. My maiden name was Edwards. Oh, well, pardon my slipping pets. Oh, it's really quite simple. I'm now Molly Baskin. I was Molly Edwards, see? Oh, yes. Before that, it was Bridie Murphy. 
Well, I've been dying to meet you. <laughs> You're the funniest man. Well, dear, you bring Stuart over here tomorrow night, we'll all have hysterics together. Thank you so much. You're entirely welcome. Bye. Bye. Don't tell me you finally threw one back. Too small? Got a husband. Too big. No coffee. No oh, coffee? No, save it for her husband. I think he's coming in tomorrow night. I know. I can finish the joke, and you want to poison him. Mm -hmm. No, I think you like your coffee. I really mean. Yeah? Yeah, he's in the oil business, and that stuff's pretty crude. I know. I hate myself for saying it. Willie. Hmm? I've been waiting an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I was tied up in a Texas stampede. Uh, why have you been waiting an hour for me? Don't you remember? You said we're going to go out on the town tonight. Oh, so I did. My name's Alice, remember? I told you last night. So you did. When we had the drink last night. Oh, so we did. Uh, just one question, Alice. Do you remember the Alamo? The what? OK, you passed the test. Let's go out of the town. Hey, wait a minute. Well, you just got here. You can't leave now. Oh? You can't run a business like this. That's what the police have been telling me for years. Come on, Willie. Oh, the price one pays for being a lonely child. See you tomorrow night, Marty. Uh, good evening, Mickey. Hi. No lipstick smudges tonight? Well, we all have bad days. Tell me, dear, did a Mr. Baskin and his wife come in tonight? They're from Texas. Mr. Dandy, I want you to meet my ever-loving steward. It's a real pleasure to meet you, Mr. Dandy. Any man my darling wife says is a nice man is a nice man in my book, and you can bet on that. I uh, take it you pump your oil by hand? <laughs> He's the cleverest man. I want you to meet my friends here, Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown. Well, those names are rather familiar. Uh, you're uh, Smith? That's right. Funny, uh, I once knew a man looked a great deal like you. His name was Dan Flick. They called him Flicker because he was so quick with a deck of cards. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? Mr. Smith here can deal cards like nobody's business. Nobody's business? I thought everybody had a business. What is your business, Mr. Smith? I import fish. I see. Sharks? You know, they didn't even want to come along tonight. We were all set to play another game back at the hotel. But I said, boys, we can play later on. Right now, we got to meet this man my ever-loving says is so nice. <laughs> of course, we can only stay a while. Ah, I'm glad you came by. Give this card to the uh, man on the door, and I'll be there in a little while. Well, we're much obliged to you, Mr. Dandy. Yes, we're much obliged. But as Mr. Baskin says, we can't stay long. No, oh, I, I know, yes. Your business. The fish will spoil if it isn't taken care of right away, is that it? Oh, he ain't working tonight, but we got our card game scheduled. I know, yes. Well, go back and take a look around. Nice meeting you. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm dealing tonight. <laughs> Good luck. You too. Oh, you're on time tonight. Yeah, I'm not well. Say, you're right. Her husband is big. Those his brothers with him? You know, a couple of con men. What are they doing with a young couple? They got a fish on the line. Hmm? Speaking of fish, get a hold of Jackson. Tell him I want to see him right away. Okay. What's the matter with them? Let you guys in the door? Try sliding under the crack. We waited out here to have a word with you. All right, I'll give you the word. Goodbye. Let's pick on somebody your own size. Or don't you know I want small enough? Don't get smart, Willie. He's our sucker. We found him. Played him along slow, and tonight we plan to really take him. We'll stay here for an hour, then we'll go over to our game. Don't try to keep them here any longer. Is that a threat, mister? It is. Show him what I mean, Barney. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, Willie. You rough us up and we tip the police about you having this back room open again. Figure you'd rather leave us alone than pay a big fine. Come on. Been drinking much this coffee? No, oh, Jackson, I got some playmates here tonight. I just got belted. Anyone I know? Dan Flick. Never met the gentleman. Oh, good. And he doesn't know you. Maybe you can help. Help? 
Flick decided to play rough, all right, we'll play rough. But my way, slow but sure. Come on. Eleven, the winner. Hey, lucky line. Your line wins. Twenty-four, black. Well, having a luck? Not bad, not bad at all. Stuart's so smart. Twice he set on the number that little ball dropped on. If he wins enough, does he get to take a turn at the wheel and spin the ball? Honey, if he wins enough, he wins the wheel. Let him spin it all he wants. Oh, I just don't understand this game. I'm afraid maybe you've forgotten about it, Mr. Dante. No, 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 not at all. I, uh, sorry I couldn't get back earlier. I just, uh, had a stomach ache. Hmm. Too bad. Do you feel all right now? Oh, yes, yes. Fine, thank you. It came on me suddenly. Very suddenly. Those things can be dangerous. True, yes. And it could be something contagious. Who knows? I may give you the same thing I had. Well, come on now. Let's not yak. Let's play. Give me a lucky number, honey. Take uh, our wedding date. The 21st. Bet on 21. All right. Lose your seven, seven away. Nineteen red. Oh, it didn't win. Now, don't you fret, honey. We'll just keep playing it till it does win. You better not, Stu. We have to get back at the hotel for our game, remember? Well, I can't have my darling feeling bad. It'll come up soon, just you see. It's love. Oh, excuse me. Oh, well, Mr. Jackson, welcome back again, sir. Oh, good evening, William. How is Europe? European. Really nice to have you with us. How's your luck these days? Well, I don't really know. I haven't played for so long. Let's test. Uh, 5,000 on the red. You're on. That's 17 black. Yes, I am a bit rusty. Now, or shall I settle later? Oh, no, let's make it later. Why don't we run over to the blackjack table? You always did prefer cards. It's the only real sport. Would you excuse us a moment, please? Yes. You just go right ahead, Mr. Daddy. I'm still going to wait on 21 to come up. Good luck. I hope you gentlemen brought your sleeping bags. This way, Mr. Jackson. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. Eight upon eight, now the two fours, the hard way. How was I? Perfect example of the idle rich. My former self. Oh, to be rich again. And idle. But a waiter is neither. Stop complaining. Just stay here and play blackjack with Sam and act like you're spending a lot. Gladly with your money, but I get to keep what I win. I'm safe. You never win. Does anyone come up yet? No, not yet. I'll just keep trying. No, we will. Tommy, you see these two boys here watching the roulette? Have them come into my office. Come in. Sit down, Blake. Where's your partner? Left him to keep an eye on Texas. What's on your mind, Daddy? Business. Not hard to discuss. You stay out of ours and we'll stay out of yours. You've got a pigeon that Texan all set for the kill. Well, I got a pigeon, too. Did you notice the Englishman in the back room? Yeah. Name's Jackson. He's loaded. Doesn't mind losing. So? Well, I like to make a fast buck as well as the next guy, but I can't fleece Jackson here. It's bad publicity. I figure if we throw in together, we can take Jackson, then the Texan, both in the same night. One night's work, we split a small fortune. You say the Englishman's really got a pile. Would I have anything to do with him if he didn't? You know, there are not many fellows I'd throw in with, but you've got a talented dealing arm that uh, I've got a lot of respect for. What do you say? Uh, we figure we can get 25,000 out of the Texan. What about your sucker? Oh, at least that, maybe double. Sounds okay. How do we work it? You tell the Texan you're going back to your hotel to wait for him. I'll steer Jackson over and we'll take him. We don't want them together. Suppose the Texan comes over first. He won't. He said he was going to play 21 until it came up. I'll instruct my man to not let 21 win until we're good and ready. Sounds good. I'll get Barney and meet you at the Hotel Fairmont. It's room uh, 612. Okay, I'll have Jackson over there in half an hour. No uh, hard feelings about the rough stuff earlier? <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the game, you know that? See you at the Fairmont. Okay. Please. Out? No, 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 
I'll call later, thanks. How's your memory? Good as ever. Well, that's terrible, but try to remember this. Fairmont Hotel, room 612. Got it? Got it. Keep it. Sure you can spare it? Well, I'll get fresh. You know that suit of clothes you like so well? Oh, you mean the checks? I'm not sure it's so loud, it blinds me, but whatever it is, wear it. And meet me, room 612, Fairmont Hotel, in half an hour. Why? Now, there you go asking questions again. I got a curious mind. You certainly have, scant. Hello, Ed. You see that Texan by the roulette table? The one with the girl. Yeah, Willie. Tell Charlie to wait 10 minutes and then let number 21 win. That's right. Oh, and uh, send Jackson out to my car, will you? So he's winning. Prime loose and send him out. You know, I still don't like cutting Danny in on this. Why not? The Englishman's his setup. Well, we could have done okay with just the Texan. Now we got to split what we take them both for. Says who? Huh? Willie said we'd split. I didn't. We take his sucker, then our sucker, then we make a sucker out of Willie. Oh, I get it. You know, I'm beginning to like the idea. That must be Daddy. And the money man. Well, uh, right on time. All right, sir. Mr. Smith, meet Mr. Jackson. How do you do, sir? Great pleasure. The pleasure is mine, sir. That is, if you can provide my sporting blood with a little excitement. Yes, I've heard you're uh, quite a gambler. It's my friend, Mr. Brown. Oh, excellent. A foursome. Shall we uh, get started? Oh, let's try to take it first. Well, what do you know? I'm fresh out. Do you mind if I buy one of yours, Smith? Hey, my cigarettes are on the table. Yeah, I know. What is this, a lighter? Good heaven. Let's put the toys away and get on with the game. <laughs> no hurry. Open the door, Jackson. What is this? Catch, Monty. Hey, that's dangerous. Just see that Mr. Flick here doesn't get frisky. What's going on here, Dante? Oh, we're all set up for a poker game, so we'll have one. Monty, Jackson, the Texan, and me. He should be here in a minute. So that's it. You're cutting us out so you can fleece Baskin all by yourself. That's right. But you and Brown won't see it. You'll be in the closet. Jackson, tear up a sheet and tie up these two characters. I'll explain the situation to Marty before Baskin gets here. I wish you would. I'm a little confused. That is the understatement of the year. Tear up a sheet, will you? I do hope you two gentlemen won't be too uncomfortable in the closet, but this little Texas boy who wants to be a gambler has got to learn a lesson. <laughs> But I hate cigars. Go on, smoke it, and don't forget your lines. I'll get it. You sit down. Oh, sorry I'm late, Mr. Danny, but I dropped Molly off at the room. She'd had enough gambling for one night. Well, poker's a man's game anyway. If you can get pretty rough at times. Where's Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown? Oh, sorry, they got all tied up. But they told us to go on without them. By the way, have you met Mr. Jackson? Oh, no, but I've seen him at your place. Howdy. My pleasure, sir. I've always loved people from Texas. They get a little quarrelsome at times, but I do admire a man who can die with his boots on, so to speak. <laughs> you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, you mugs, cut out the chatter and lay out the scratch. Oh, this is Shoulders Monty from Chicago, sir. Howdy. Hi. Well, seems like I've seen you somewhere before, too. You ever been in Q? Q? Uh, San Quentin. Shoulders vacations there every season or so. He does. Well, shall we get started? Nothing like a fun little card game between pals. Uh, well, I... You know, uh, we don't invite everybody to play with us here. But I spotted you as a real gambler the minute I laid eyes on you. You did? I sure did. Sit down. Hey, it's chips, Bob. How much are they? Oh, don't worry about that. We'll figure that out later. All right, Slippery. You deal. My pleasure. Well, don't we cut for deal? Sounds fun. Who do we cut? Now, put that thing away. He's only joking, Slippery. Go ahead with the deal. Oh, Mr. Dandy, are you sure Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown won't be back? Uh, I mean, I, I promised I'd play with them. Oh, they won't mind. After all, we're friends. Say, by the way, Shoulders, uh, you and uh, Smith were cellmates at one time, weren't you? Yeah, we both got five on that Philly heist. I knew Smith well. Do you remember that terrible boar who accused me of cheating? Well, Smith helped me take care of the argument with the dear fellow. May he rest in peace. Pick up the cards. Uh, oh, yeah, sure.
Can you open? Oh, Mr. Danny, I just remembered something. M my little wife, Molly, uh, asked me tonight if we couldn't go to Niagara Falls on our honeymoon. And, and Well, you know how I hate to have my darling feeling bad. What's that got to do with opening? Well, gentlemen, I, I thought I just might go get Molly to pack up and we'd take a train to Niagara. Splendid idea. Right after the game. Sure, sure. You won't find sports like us in Niagara Falls. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. Well, I think maybe I... Sit down. Well, I'll open. Four ten. Oh, it's getting hot in here. Now, Shoulders, you promised there wouldn't be any trouble. Oh, this is going to be a nice, friendly game. But I didn't know he was going to be here. And what do you mean by that? Whatever you want, All Tommy. Right, well... All right, boys, boys, boys. Down. Sit down. On the table. You two, on the table. Uh... Now remember, boys, no trouble for at least the first hour. First hour? You can't expect to keep tempers down all night. Well, Mr. Danny, gentlemen, I... Well, I, I don't want to sound unfriendly, but... Well, my little wife wants to go to Niagara, and... Uh, well, now, I don't want you to take offense, but... Well, <laughs> you know how women are. <laughs> She's been right all along, and I, well. <laughs> maybe, maybe some other time. Uh, what I mean is, well, if you're ever, ever down Texas way, well, I'll be sure and, be sure and see the Rio Grande. It's, it's awful big. <laughs> Say, you know you ought to spend more time in your office. I've been trying to call you all evening. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Got a big surprise for you. Dan Flake and Barney Todd all tied up and waiting for you. Fairmount Hotel, room 612. Well, I'm much obliged. I appreciate that. I thought you would. Yeah. I've got a surprise for you, too, Willie. Yeah? Yeah, when you called me in my office, I was out on a case. A pretty routine case, but I do enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Put it in the truck with the other equipment, boys. Oh, no. Easiest trade I ever pulled on you, Willie. You were slipping. But it's unfair. I wasn't here. Tell it to the judge. All this because a gal from Texas wanted to be a good wife. You know, you just might not be able to convict me this time. I think I'll plead insanity. Come on, Willie. Leave us drive to the station. Oh, how rough can it get? to you by your neighborhood Singer Sewing Centers from coast to coast and the more than 32,000 members of the Singer Organization who make, sell, and service Singer sewing machines for both industry and the home. Remember, Singer sells its products and services only through its company-owned Singer Sewing Centers, identified by the Singer and Red S trademarks on the storefront. Thank you. 
don't come to the point. Oh, it's easy to be wrong. What's the damn two pain? Coming out for point, then they hit him in. So we don't pass. Seven grams of heaven coming out for nothing. Well, an ace. Blackjack. Hmm, good for you. Go buy yourself a mink coat. I already have one. You pay the guy back. <laughs> Do you always kid, Mr. Dante? Only when I'm on duty. I'm very serious in my own time. Oh, don't forget me, Willie. That wouldn't be easy. Hit me, Willie. Hit me real, real hard. Hard enough? Harder. Harder. Honey, there are 52 cards in the deck. I'd love to deal them all to you, but uh, I'm afraid the place might catch on fire. Sorry, you're over 21. Is that bad? Excuse me, girls. I've got to see a man about some ice water. Good evening, William. Well, things seem very active tonight, and I feel tremendously lucky. I hope you have a self-winding wristwatch. I hate to see all that energy go to waste. But, William... No gambling, Jackson. You know that. Now, go on out and wait on tables like you're supposed to. I was relieved at 6 o'clock. When I'm on duty, your word is my command. But when I'm off duty, I reserve the right to choose my own means of entertainment. But fear not, William. I won't break the bank. I may dent it a little, but I won't break it. Outside. Mr. Williams. Outside. But I, I think that... Oh, now, please, Willie. Just keep moving. Yeah, but I haven't traveled this far since I gave up my Rolls Royce. You'll never learn, will you? Ten years ago, you had a million dollars in this gambling fever. Hit you, and what happened? Now, look, please, let's not drag up the past. Now, you're just ashamed to have me cash my paycheck here. And talking of miserable wages, don't you think that... No. Very well. The one thing I cannot stand is prejudice. You allow everyone in the back room but me. Do you want me to carry you up the stairs? Right. Oh, Mr. Jackson, will you go out in the town and have some nice, clean fun for a change? Go to a movie. There's a new June Allison picture in town. Who? You want me to cash your paycheck? No, oh, thank you. I'll fend for myself. I'm going out into the world and seek friendship and understand you, the companionship of my fellow men. You should be a big hit at the mission. If I work for you much longer, I'll need a mission. And at least they don't water the soup. Charge it. the bums rush for Jackson. Oh, you wanted to go in the back room again. Never mind, save the poison. Save it? For what? That's a good question. I'd tell you to throw it away, but I don't want to wreck the plumbing. This here is a good pot. Oh, sure, sure. But what's in it? That's what scares me. This is kind of crummy tonight, isn't it? Oh, it's not bad. You're just upset because you got here too early. I should go home and take a nap. Why don't you sleep in the office? It's more fun at home. I can take the phone off the hook. I think I'll do that. I'll grab a little shot of Andy back around midnight. Oh, uh, in case you should want me, uh, I won't. Thanks for the sentiment. Give my hat, please. Will you be coming back, Mr. Dante? Oh, I think so. Why? Just something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Now you get a raise. You leaving, Mr. Daddy? Oh, just for a little while, Tommy. Pull up my car, will you? Sure thing. Don't make a move, Daddy. Am I allowed to shiver? There's a gun in my pocket. I uh, know your pocket's in my back. Be careful of my spine, will you? Just act like I'm a friend. I'm not too good an actor. What's this all about? You can't be working your way through law school. You'll find out. Just act natural. You sure you want to write in this? It's kind of open. You might see a conspicuous. Why don't you walk? I'll pick you up someplace, like maybe the city jail. <laughs> <laughs> Always with the jokes, huh, Willie? Nice of you to offer me this lift. Good night, Mr. Dante. See you later. Uh, I sure hope so, Tommy. Well, where to? Will any old cemetery do? We'll need old apartments over on 5th. Get started. Anderson, huh? Hello, Willie. Good to see you again. Hey, you look great. Oh, I feel great. Nothing like a gun in your back to give it a picked up feeling. I got a proposition for you, Willie. I'm not interested. Hey, this is a pretty nice place you're smelling up here. 
Kind of expensive, isn't it, for a guy who's just out of jail? I like to live well. Nothing but the best for Gus Anderson. Well, they have a pretty good sell at the river. I hope they're saving it for you. Why? I'm not going back. And you're going to see to it that I don't go back. Oh? Willie, a uh, blackmailer runs a big risk. Sooner or later, one of his pigeons squeals to the cops. The cops rig up a marked payoff. The blackmailer gets caught taking money. He's convicted. It's the story of your life. Five years ago. But I'm out now, and I'm on my way up again. Only this time, I won't get caught. You don't need me, Gus. You need a psychiatrist. I need Willie Dante in Willie Dante's back room. What? When I put the bite on somebody, I'll make them take the dough to your place. They'll cash it at the chips. You'll see that they lose it at the tables, but you'll also see that one of my boys wins at the tables. That's how the money gets to me. Maybe you don't hear so well. I said I'm not interested. I'm interested. Willie, you're a loyal guy. You wouldn't want to see a friend get hurt. Well, right now, your waiter, Jackson, this guy who's nuts about gambling, is holed up in a safe place with two of my boys. Now, if you do what I say tonight, he's alive tomorrow morning. If you don't, he isn't. It's no bluff, Willie. Oh, you're a fool, Anderson. A fool to try blackmail again, and a bigger fool to try kidnapping. Kidnapping? <laughs> Who said anything about kidnapping? I just had a couple of my boys meet Jackson outside your club and ask him where they could find a sporting man, that's all. What? Yeah, they said they wanted to play poker, needed a few more players. Your Jackson went with them, like that. Right now, they're off someplace playing poker, and Jackson's winning. Now, you know, he'll stay right there of his own free will. But if you want him to leave there alive, Willie, it's up to you. So you see, it's not kidnapping. Someday, Gus, I'll break your neck for this. Talk is cheap. Go on, leave. Get back to the club. I'll have the pigeon look you up at 9. I'll be there at 9.30. And don't get any ideas. The cards are stacked in my favor, this deal. <laughs> Jackson? No, why should I? Get on the phone, call his boarding house, see if he's there. Huh? Just do as I say. Get on the phone, call. Danny's Inferno. Who? Just a minute, I'll see if he's here. It's Lieutenant Waldo. Oh, great. You out? No. no. Get Jackson on the other phone. Hello, Dad. Everything's fine at college. Just send more money. I hear maybe you don't need money, son. I hear maybe you've opened your back room again. Oh, now, Waldo, who would start a vicious rumor like that? You know me. Yeah, I know you. You're the guy giving me the gray hair. Well, before you break down and cry, tell me something. How come Gus Anderson's out of prison? What do you care about Gus Anderson? Oh, I just happened to see him on the street today. I thought he got 10 years. He did. He got parole last month. Good behavior. Oh, parole, huh? Well, why don't you spend your time checking up on Anderson instead of hounding an honest businessman like me? Honest businessmen. <laughs> you made your first buck with a printing press. No, oh, now, come on, Waldo. I've paid my debts to society. I've paid enough fines to finance your office for 20 years. Now get your big fat feet off of my desk and go back to work. Why, are you fresh? Hi. Did you get Jackson? No, his landlady said he phoned earlier and told her he was going to be late. But he had a date with Dame Fortune. Now, what does that mean? Hmm. That means Gus Anderson was telling the truth. Well, it's almost nine. Looks like we're going into a new business. What's that? Blackmail. Young man, you're a dealer after my own heart. Every time you deal, I get a good hand. You're a lucky man, Jackson. Yeah, real lucky man. Yes, I suppose I should feign modesty, but the truth will out. I always knew my luck would return, and tonight it would seem as it has. 
Well, we'll see. It's just 9 o'clock. We've got the whole night ahead of us. Spoken like a true gambler. You know, I hate people who play for a few hours and then quit. After all, an all-night session every now and then can't kill a man. I'll open. Marty. Hmm? Hold it up. Oh, you must be worried. This is your third cup. One more and I'll be numb. Maybe it'll help. Hey, it's 9 o'clock. Didn't you say Anderson would be here at 9? 9.30. But whoever he's blackmailing should be here by now. Oh, what a setup, and I'm right in the middle of the whole thing. You really think you'll hurt Jackson if you don't play ball? I don't know. But with Anderson's kind, you'd never know. I'd hate to take a chance and call his hand. <whistles> hmm? This is no time to admire beautiful women. Well, that doesn't sound like you. Besides, she's not only beautiful, she's a celebrity. Yeah, it's Betty Maxwell, the singer. I got all her records. Since when have you collected anything but prison records? I'm a music lover. She's on television, too. Oh, fine thing. I'm being shoved into a blackmail scheme and you drool over a dame. Mmm, not just a dame. Betty Maxwell. Excuse me, Mr. Dandy. Yeah? The young lady in booth three wants to speak to you. Booth three? Yes, sir. Hey, that's her, Betty Maxwell. She wants to see you? Looks that way. You don't suppose she's the one Gus Anderson's been bleeding? One way to find out. Maxwell? Sit down. Thank you. I guess you know why I'm here. I'm afraid I do. Willie really, Dante. I'd always heard you were an honest dealer. Live and learn. You better learn some more, dear. Learn not to make snap judgments. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Dante. I may have to pay you an Anderson, but I don't have to like you. Miss uh, Maxwell, would you believe me if I told you I wanted no part of this transaction? No. Well, that figures, but it's true. What did Anderson tell you? That I was to bring $2,500 and to come here. When he gets here, I'm to go back to the gambling room and start playing blackjack. With you dealing. And you agreed because Gus has something on you. You know, we're both being forced into this deal, honey. How could he force you? It's a long story. How about you? Can I trust you, Mr. Dante? You can. He has a picture, a picture I posed for a long time ago. I was studying voice then, and I, well, I posed for enough money to pay my rent. On a bearskin rug? Just about. Gus got a hold of the picture and threatened to send it to one of those scandal magazines. It could be embarrassing. So I pay. I see. You should have let Gus send it in. They might make a calendar out of it. I've heard that doesn't always hurt a gal. No, thanks. Not as long as I can stop it. Gus called me over to his hotel last Monday and explained the whole setup. And tonight he told me to be here. You say he called you to his hotel? He has an apartment by the hotel. I met him at the Drake. Hmm. Maybe he has a room there for his payoffs. By any chance, do you remember the room number? Uh, 23. Excuse me, I have a hunch. I'll see you again before Gus gets here. Molly, hmm? have I to take your place behind the bar. I want you to go to the Drake Hotel and find out who's in room 23. What for? Well, a hotel room sounds like an ideal place to have an all-night poker game. Oh, I don't want to go to an all-night poker game. Will you shut up and get out of here? Check room 23 and call me back. I'll wait for Anderson. Okay, but I still don't get it. Well, don't do anything foolish without me. How can I? You're the only one who thinks up fool ideas. I only work here. Johnny Appleseed. Do I go back to the gambling room now? No, uh, just stall a little, finish your drink. Ah, oh, boys, hi. Well, good evening, Mr. Dante. Your nice place you have here. Oh, you'll like it better next week. We're painting the walls of prison gray. That's very funny. I've got a pocket full of those kind. I see you met the pigeon. Yeah. Do you care to start the festivities? Nice young. Let it happen easy, like so people won't get suspicious. You want it on the phone, Mr. Dante? Thank you. Excuse me, gentlemen, I hate to tear myself away. I know. I grow on people. Well, I got one in the bucket that fits that, too, but it's kind of old. I don't mind hearing you. You grow on people, so do warts. Yeah, it's old, all right. Okay, you get the bucket. Yeah? Uh, Willie, uh, I'm a 
to Drake. I just checked on room 23. Well? Oh, no. Are you sure? Positive. Two old ladies from Pasadena. I just talked to the bellhop to check them in tonight. Well, go up and see for yourself. Knock at the door. Uh, tell me I got the wrong room, anything, but make sure. Good. Gus told me to go on back. Oh, fine. Here, uh, give this card to the man on the door and he'll let you in. Oh, Willie, about that hotel room. I made a mistake. What? It's room 33, not 23. And Gus still has it. He told me if anything goes wrong here tonight, to meet him there tomorrow. Well, good for Gus. You go on back, I'll see you in a little while. All right. Call the Drake Hotel and page Marty. When you find him, tell him to wait there for me. I'll meet him in the lobby. That was Lieutenant Waldo on the phone. Waldo? Yeah, he wants me to come down to his office and have a little chat. What about? No, Waldo just loves to gab. Shouldn't take long. Of course, if you'd rather I didn't go, he might come here. You make the choice. I guess you got time, just so you watch what you tell him. And remember, any slip-ups in Jackson gets a blood bath. You say the nicest things. Take Sam here with you. To see Waldo? Yeah, he can wait outside. I just want to keep tabs on him. Okay. okay. Come on, boy. Deal, boy. Deal. In that car, will you, Tommy? Yes, sir. Doesn't that gun make calluses on your hands? Sorry. You know, there's one thing I like about you, Sam. You don't monopolize the conversation. Now, as for me... I... Oh, what do you know? We don't have to get on and see Waldo after all. Here he comes now. Hope it isn't a raid. Take this punk out back and tie him up and get the cook to help you. Yes, sir. Well, there you are. Any takers? Yeah, I'm out. I'll go along. I'll raise you 50. Well, now, let me see. When a man's lucky, he's got to back his hunches, so... Fifty, and I'll raise you a hundred. Yeah, no more for me. You know, you must have a pretty good hand. Just two pair. But a successful bluff is as good as four aces any time. Ah, <laughs> gentlemen, what a steel-nerved gambler you're up against. Yes? Room service. You got the wrong room. Room 33, that was the order. Ah, oh, let him in. We could use some refreshments, ordered or not. Go away. Ah, <laughs> don't worry. I'm willing. It'll be my treat. He has no limit to your efforts to keep me from regaining my lost fortune. Oh, shut up and get your coat on. I will not. I'm going to stay with my friends and apologize for your intolerable brutality. Explain it to him, will you, Marty? I've got to get back to Anderson. Now you can tell him a deal's off, huh? I could, but I won't. I'd rather beat him at his own game. Oh, yes, you can talk about winning games, but not me. Oh, no, you don't know how much I was winning tonight. And you don't care. You don't know how close you came to losing. And I do care. Fill him in, Marty. Look, Jackson, here's what really happened. These guys weren't playing cards with you for real. You were being held here as a hostage. Hostage. Well, I see. Oh, I got smart. I figured if you didn't have Sam around, you wouldn't have anyone for me to pass Betty Maxwell's money to. So you'll have to call the deal off. Where's Sam? I bought it off. Gave him enough money to go to Las Vegas, have a good time. You should pay your help better, it keeps him loyal. I told you, no stunts. It was worth the money I gave him. Now you can't go through with your plan. You forgot one thing, Dante. There's still somebody here for you to pass the money to. Me. You? That's right, now let's go back. You win the money from the dame, then see that I win it. Well, I, I thought you wanted to stay out of it, Gus. Why? It looks as legit if I win as it would if Sam won. And I'll settle with him later. But this deal goes through tonight. Well, guess I wasn't as smart as I thought. 
Let's go. He's going to make me pay off before he lets me alone. Watch. Fifty dollars worth. You're a big spender, Gus. What are you doing here? Oh, I drop over once in a while to close Willie down. Only tonight he called me up and invited me over. What? Yeah, funny guy, Willie. He'd rather have me close him down again than help a rat like you stay in business. He's a funny guy. Hey, what is this? You can't arrest me. You can't prove anything against me. That's right, Waldo. Gus is a bright boy. Worked out a slick plan. So slick he came back to make it work himself without taking time to think it over. Think what over? Your parole, stupid, remember? No drinking, no carrying a gun, no gambling. Now, oh, now, don't be rash, Waldo. Maybe Gus can explain to the nice judge what he was doing in the gambling house with those nice blue chips in his hand. Maybe, but if he can, he'll be back doing the rest of his time another five years. Come on, big man. Oh, Willie, my boys are outside. I brought them over to haul in the equipment and close the place down. Yeah, yeah, well, thanks for being so thoughtful. You'll have to come in, too, Willie. Yeah, I know. I always do. Thanks, Willie. Oh, by the way, those two guys I picked up over at the hotel, they're glad to oblige with that. Come on. Thanks. Have a new shooter, new point coming out. How much goes for this shooter? Betsy hit a man, stupid old pass. He's coming out for number. New shooter, new point. What happened? I was just raided. Is that what you were worried about? That's a negative, dear, and it's very positive. How did you get it? An old policeman who should be retired just gave it to me. But now you may keep it, and you don't have to worry about Gus Anderson anymore. Oh, Willie, I could kiss you. Well, why don't you? Give me something to think about in my cell tonight. Tell me, dear, did you date ex-jailbirds? What? I'll call you in the morning, first thing. Mm -hmm. 